a little bit here. Our chairman will be here in a couple of minutes. Um, Pat, are there any changes to the um, agenda that you know of? A, a few orders, possible orders. Let's discuss minor activities, please. I make a motion to accept the agenda with the additional minor activities day and possibly more orders going on. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Do we want to start with any of the administrative items? The um, old firehouse marshal, is that Frank's or is that someone else that wanted to? It's not. The parole commission, we were okay. supposed to put a sign up at the property. Yeah, we, um, they gave us the land. They needed us the land probably four years ago, three, four so years ago. Yeah, and um, anyways, it's down behind... How can I describe it? It's behind oh, the senior South center Lodge. now. There's a strip of land where the old library used to be. Um, the Allen Memorial mm -hmm. Library. You know how, how, how that triangle is there? Well, if you went between the houses there and went down, there's a sliver of land and there's the, that little brook in there. Well, they deeded their property to us and what they had asked was if we could just put up a sign, and there is an example of it floating on the table for the old firehouse marsh sign. And I think it will cost a couple hundred dollars. $140? Yeah. Yeah, do. there. If you could just show. And um, the board just has to vote if we want to do it or not. It, you know, it would be a nice gesture to put in if anybody's walking down there and they'll know what it is. Because that was one of the original five firehouses, the senior center. That was a firehouse for many years in town. So I guess I'll, I'll make a motion to accept the signage and to pay for it. And does anybody want to second, second that? Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Done. Thank you. You want to move on to Seaside? Um, we, we could hold off on that until the chairman gets there. The, the next couple of ones I can give you an update. Um, 12 Ocean Drive, uh, we've talked about scheduling the site visit either Tuesday. Uh, no, I think you said Thursday or Friday. Thursday or Friday next week. I, I got everybody's emails back. I'll just see how many can go each day and, and I'll get that out tomorrow. But uh, he's going to be available and we can do that. Um, 31 Candlewood Drive. Um, Paul Shea has been involved with this uh, property owner to try to restore things, and everybody thought it was a good idea that Paul attended the visit. So we're trying to get a date that's good for the, uh, the property owner and for Paul and for us. The property owner hasn't responded to the letter yet. Letter, he hasn't responded to no, the letter? No, no. So have, have you had any more calls? Nope. Um, Hopefully maybe he All Right. Was there also going to be a visit to uh, Clap Road? Yes, um, I got everybody's times on that, and I didn't get a chance today to get back to you, but it sounded like three or four people could do the same day, and then someone suggested also doing Lisa one of the other did. sites. Lisa did. I yeah. suggested do both on the same day. Yeah, what was the other site? Um, well, it, it, it was the it Ocean Drive. Ocean Drive, Drive. okay. Yeah. All right, maybe we'll, yeah, okay, well, why don't we try it's to like do that? It's going to extreme. Okay. It's all right. Yeah. All went down. Okay. Do we want to get right into the... Um, RFD. Well, we will. Oops, no, we won't. Comes bearing gifts. Oh. Sorry about that. Thanks. Sure, no problem. All we covered was the. We did not do Seaside Road. We did the other administrative items. So that's still left, and then I was going to go to the RFD, but it came in. So we can do Seaside and I'll finish that Absolutely. first? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry.
sorry, Pat. That's, My apologies. That's fine. Yeah, we had uh, talked to Mr. Carpenter and he wanted to come in uh, informally to talk about 49 Seaside. So. Okay. I'm Joel Carpenter. I live at 49 Seaside Road. Um, the, the predecessor, the guy I bought from, constructed a shed on the property without permission. And I found out about that shortly before the closing. I, I guess you guys issued him an order to remove it. So. Um, what I wanted to discuss with the board is whether I could persuade you to um, allow me to retain it. I moved in on February the 8th, which was uh, the day of the hurricane, and the second day I was there the next morning, we were surrounded by water, and um, it was a mess, but it gave me, you know, I was able to see what happened with the flood water coming onto the property in a very bad storm, and what I uh, what, what I observed, and I have pictures, which at some stage I can show you if you want to see them, that the water flow is not impeded or redirected by the shed, and it just kind of goes by it. The shed moved about, I'd say, eight inches or a foot as a result of this. And so what I'm hoping to see if you guys would be open to is whether I could not remove it, but keep it, or keep it if you want me to put it up a little bit, or do something. Um, it's a you know, it's uh, having lived there for six months, there's no storage in these houses that are on pilings, and so it, that's all I got. And it, it'd be really a shame to, to have to get rid of it. So I'm not here with any formal petition, or uh, I'm not really familiar with the process, but I just wanted to get a sense from the board of whether you guys are open to, to something like that. There's also an email that came in yesterday that you all have a copy of, um, kind of explaining the history of it. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Frank, do you want to see it? I, I've got one here. Okay. Um, I, I have some pictures of the way the water went during the storm. If you're interested in seeing them, I'm happy to, happy to show them to you. Have um, you seen it, Paul? Can I just... You know what? We're not going to make a decision tonight. If, if the shed were to stay here, there'd have to be a filing of some sort. Right. Um, so it's not as simple as just... Yeah, no, I knew coming I, in and asking if right, but I, I think as an informal piece, um, we can discuss it for a minute. We've got a whole bunch of things on the agenda for tonight, and not to come here late and then cut you short, but okay. we have a lot of stuff to one, do. One problem with this was she came in for a CSC, and that's how we in, know in order to get approval, there's a certificate of compliance. Yeah. Um, there were existing orders on the house, and one of those orders, and that's why we'd really need the time to take a look at the folder. Penny might have better recollection than I do. But there was other circumstances that somehow came to the piece to have the shed removed, you know, whether it was illegal or, or whatever. The, the folks that you bought the house from came in. They needed a certificate of compliance to give to your attorney or bank, I assume, right. yeah. to get them to pass on the house. And one of those pieces was the shed. So. The board um, was willing to issue the certificate of compliance, but with the agreement that the shed and they and they gave that up in a heartbeat because they just wanted to pass papers. Um, so we really would need to look at the orders and, and recall. Have I just don't recall what the issues were. Yeah. Well, basically, what it was was we said because they want to pass papers all right but that shed has to be removed and she said yes it will be removed so we but, we but what i'm saying what i'm saying oh. Penny, is that we i don't know why the shed oh because when um when the house was built or something else was done there was never any mention of a shed so when the csc when they went down to do the inspection they said where did this shed come from this was never on any plans or permitted or anything so okay. that's how the shed that's came right about. so that's I think right. if, I think if you're trying to keep something that's that's not there probably the best thing and Pat might give it whether or not they're filing an RDA or an NOI yeah I think the issue with it is you know during this past winter it was also the sheds washed into the marsh and into the river everything that's at that elevation um, you know gets wiped out and the stuff is everywhere lawnmowers um, the building department doesn't require a building permit so we don't automatically know that people are putting sheds in there. But we do, um, you know, we do have jurisdiction over everything in those areas. So we would have required a filing for the shed. We would have had the debate, is this going to cause problems for our butters and for the marsh? 
The other thing is, it, the water does get directed on either side of it. So even though it only moved a little, it does direct more water in different directions than it would have gone. It's better to have a, a clear area if possible. So we're, we're trying to regulate these things that are ending up in the market. Okay. Can you, so if he wanted to keep, to essentially keep the shed, um, would you recommend an RDA or an NOI for that? Well, I mean, it's in the resource area. It's not in a buffer. It really is in a resource okay. area. And whether it is something that could go on pilings or it just it. I was going to say, you might be able to do an RDA. How high would it have to go, you know, for, for four piers or something? Under yeah, maybe. I mean, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't had any since I've been here, but I, right. I know that to have the ability of the water to pass under it. Um, building department won't get involved in it, right, so it's right. kind of up to... I mean, I got a pretty good, I got a very good picture that shows you exactly how high the water went up this shed. What I, what I would recommend that you do is get the information, an, an RDA um, is a request for a determination. And, and that's sort of a simplified filing before the commission. Okay. Worst case scenario is that you would get a positive determination, which then you'd, means you'd have to file more information. But it's possible that this could be done under an RDA. And then what the commission would look at is how is the shed secured? In other words, if you're proposing to lift it in the air, how are you going to attach that shed so that it doesn't go off onto your neighbor's property, those kind of things. And you might get a little bit more information from Pat or online okay. about that. But, I mean, I, you still could be denied when it's all said and done, but I, we just don't know enough about it. And to make that decision here without that information, we uh, I understand. All right, I'll, 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 I'll file a form. I'll try to get you as informed as I can. I think when you look at that, you'll realize, you know, you have to realize the resource area that you're in and, and what the requirements are to be in that area, and not that your shed has to be as high as a house, but you have to look at some of those pieces and, and see, and you might be able to get some of that information from, from Pat as well. Okay. I'll All right. With that. Yep. Thank you. So you don't have to tear it down just yet, but we, you should do that in a timely, you know, get it done. Believe me. Okay. Nobody's in a bigger hurry to fix this than me. So well, thank you. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Well, I think that's just the right procedure. We'll go from there. Okay. Right. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we'll just would be next. The RDA. Mm -hmm. On Thursday, September 5th, 2013, during the 6.15 p.m. meeting, the Town Hall Citral Conservation Commission will act on the request of John Barry and John Tedeschi for determination of applicability of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Citral Wetlands Bylaws to perform soil testing on property located at 40 Curtis Street, Situate of Butters and other interested parties are invited to attend. See, if I keep coming in later and later and you do more and more of these, <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. It's a method. <laughs> That's okay. Good evening. For the record, Greg Morse, Morse Engineering. This property is located at 40 Curtis Street. You'll see on the plan here, the property line is in bold. It's approximately nine acres in size. Uh, the existing house, number 40 Curtis Street, Curtis Street to the East here, and we have frontage along Country Way and frontage on Whittier Drive to the west. Property itself is generally all upland area. We didn't flag any wetlands on the site. Um, it's maintained with the existing house, and then you'll notice that a majority of this rear land, this is wide open cornfield at the current moment. The site slopes from Curtis Street at elevation 79. It slopes in a east westerly direction toward Whittier Drive. Whittier Drive is at approximately elevation 60. We had Brad Holmes, a professional wetland scientist, visit the site during August of 2012 and then August of 2013 this year. Uh, Brad has walked the entire perimeter. He's looked at vegetation. He's taken soil samples and determined that there are no wetlands on the site. I'm conducting soil testing for my clients at the current moment. We've requested this RDA to verify that there are no areas on the property subject to jurisdiction under the Wetlands Protection Act or the Situate Bylaw. Um, it's kind of an unusual <laughs> it's request. I, I mean, so you, what you're asking us for is to agree, concur with your wetlands 
person. Yes, that there be for any of the work that's done on this property that no filing with this board is required. None of the subject parcel is a resource area and there are no buffers to a resource area affecting this parcel either. Okay. Um, just if we, before we jump to committee members. Okay. Well, I was just going to say, I think on the parcel itself, there doesn't appear to be any weapons. I agree with the, um, the flagging or the letter okay. from uh, Brad Holmes. I'm not sure about just off site to the um, far side to the right. There may be an area, but it could also be more than 100 feet away. It did look like there's a wet area way off, but it's off the site. So I think for soil testing, it's fine to go ahead with this. I don't think we're confirming the flagging at this point. So it's not an NRAD or anything like that. It's just... Right, right. And it may be that it doesn't need any type of flagging. I mean, I'd like to verify going out there with some soils off-site if there's a filing in the future. I guess, yeah, you can't, you can't file an NRAD because there's no flags on our physical property. I think what's important to know is that, yes, the topography, I think, Pat's specifically talking about this northern corner of the lot. Um, there does appear to be a wetland over here. We believe it's far enough off site. When you look at this plan, you'll notice that the current field actually extends beyond the property line, uh, a rather significant area. The field extends 50 feet beyond the property line. And then there's a stone wall another 50 feet into the woods. And I think the area is on the other side of the wall. So being outside the 100 foot buffer. Um, the ortho photo that we provided to the site as well kind of confirms that you know, the site has been cleared beyond that property line. So, Does our mapping show anything, Pat? Have you had a no, chance to? It doesn't, yeah. I've walked it, you know, I've walked the site, but um, it may be that there's no filing required with us after tonight. Okay. Um, Penny? <coughs> I hear what you're asking. I'm just a wee bit hesitant to sign off on it without having our own wetland specialist just to be sure, because let's face it, this is going to be a development. And as what happens, they're all controversial. Um, I know the area, the only corner I was concerned about was where you said, but I'm no expert. And I don't know. Uh, this is something we haven't been asked before, so it's almost like. Well, you know, in a way, I, mean, I think it's a courtesy to yeah. to come. No, you I know, think it's, they yeah. realize that it's a fairly significant yeah. impact, and so they're coming in and saying, "We've looked at it." Pat's saying he's <coughs> taking a walk out there. Um, I mean, if, if we have a line, and then the line is can be disputed, that's one thing. But to to ask someone to retain if someone to come in and do that. I, I'm not quite sure that that's... I'm not either. That's why I'm saying this is the first time we've been asked this, but I would okay. hate to find out there's some little pocket out there when we just, you know, said go ahead. It's almost like the work, definitely, um, you could issue a negative on. The, the work they're proposing, the testing won't impact anything, yeah. but we yep. may not want to confirm the wetland boundary, even though it's off-site, because it could create a, um, a jurisdictional buffer. That's what I wanted to clarify. Yeah. I mean, what are we asking now just to say, yeah, okay, let's go ahead and do the soil testing and that's it? Or are we saying, let's do the soil testing and agree with me that there's no wetlands jurisdiction? If we stick with A, then I think we're good. If we go to B, then we probably have an issue. Right? Yep. Well put. Yeah. Is it? I agree. I'm just well put. Well, yeah, same thing. Yeah, I agree. Is there anybody in the room? Any butters to this? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm uh, Richard Stower. Uh, my wife is <coughs> Richard Stower, and I live at 40 Whittier Drive, so we're downhill. Mm -hmm. uh, but first, if, if if I can, you know, first say we live we've lived in Sitchwood for 21 years. This is only the second time we've been in front of any uh, governmental bo uh, town governmental body. So one, I would request uh, acronyms be. Uh, stated in their full name so that we know what we're talking about and we can refer it to, uh, to it, uh, uh, RDAs or whatever. Uh, secondly, um, I'm, it, it, I, I, I hate to, to delay the, the agenda, but um, as somebody who has not come here frequently, uh, my first question is why is the Conservation Commission 
having this here? What's what's the relationship? Well, so an R this request and the conservation. And an RDA is a request for a determination. So, if a person knows that their project is in has wetlands issues or floodplain issues or whatever, they'll file what they call a notice of intent, which is a, a straightforward filing. When there's a question as to whether that's required or whether the work is very insignificant, they would file what they call an RDA, a request for a determination. So essentially they're asking us to determine whether or not a wetlands filing is required. Um, if we gave them a positive determination, we would be saying that you have to file a notice of intent. If there's no wetlands on this property, then they would not have to file a notice of intent. Um, <coughs> we're not really a permitting. I mean, there's, there's places in town where people will do <coughs> developing and, and really jump in the gun here because I don't know what they're, they're doing. I mean, it's presumed that that's the case. But what they have, what the owner of this property wants to do is whether there's any soils on that property that would support septic <coughs> systems and drainage. So they need to go in and do soils tests and they're gonna disturb some ground. The town of Situate has a bylaw that says if you disturb more than 5,000 square feet, you have to file a stormwater piece. My guess is that these park tests aren't gonna disturb more than 5,000 feet. If they are, then that's another issue. If the disturbance takes place on a piece of property where there's a wetlands nearby, it's the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission. If it takes place in an area where there's no wetlands, then it's the jurisdiction of the planning board, the stormwater piece. So really what they're doing is they're being forward and saying, we're going to do some perk tests here. I mean, uh, there's oftentimes the case where this is never before us. They look around and they say, you know what, we're going to stay more than 50 feet from the wetlands and we're going to go in and do our perk test because we have a right to do that. Um, and, and go on from there. So in, in fairness to Mr. Morser's, his client, they're coming forward and saying, we don't think there's any wetlands here. Pat's had a chance to take a quick look at it. We have some mapping in, in the town hall. It's not really super accurate, but you know, I'm a little bit familiar with this as well and believe that probably most of that wetlands is further down. If this property is to be developed, you're gonna have plenty of opportunities to to come before different things because there'll be issues of drainage and alteration of the land and all that sort of stuff. Understood. Um, so for right now, what they're looking is saying we want to we want to dig a bunch of test holes on this property and determine whether or not there's suitable drainage. Okay, thank you. But if I if I um, I'm, I'm trying to remember uh, uh, realize what the mission of the Conservation Commission is, is if there is water resources, uh, if there's a, a, a concern about water reserves, if, if, if that, is that um, an area, if I look at a map this afternoon and try to determine uh, that area being within water, uh, a water reserve area that was put out by the, um, the Open Space Commission a few years ago, uh, does that have an impact? Uh, not, does, not the fact, does the fact, does the, 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 does the fact that the, um, it's, it's usable farmland have an impact on the Conservation Commission's consideration for what will happen to that property? What there, <coughs> there could be several things that get debated when this, when they make a proposal for this piece of property. Just as if someone came in and was requesting what they call an ANRAD, and an ANRAD essentially is a place where the applicant knows that there's wetlands on the property and they want to establish those wetlands lines before they start a project. We would have that type of hearing so that we could all identify the, the wetlands lines and then they wouldn't be in dispute later on. That's not what's happening here. They're simply asking that they can go in and do the soil testing um, which I believe they have a right to do, irregardless. Okay. 
to get at the Water Resource Protection District, that would be something that if it comes before um, the planning board for subdivision approval, they would have to look at that. And same with um, the agricultural exemption. If this has been farmed as agricultural land under you know, Chapter 61A in the state law, then the town would have first crack at buying it. But I, from what I understand, it's privately owned and it's been farmed. So we don't get involved in the agricultural issues. Uh, it's only wetland resource issues. But in terms of the, the larger open space plan uh, that has no impact, that's just a guideline. It, it, it's right. it's something that would be right. nice to do. It's a goal to right. right. try to do that. The, one, one other point, is, and then I'll be done, is, is that as an abutter, we were unaware of, of this meeting. It was just a neighbor who put a, a note in our door. So can I request, uh, if that was a mistake, fine, but can I request that we, that we and as, as a butters on Whittier Drive, that we get notification of meetings? Not, not, not from the conservation. I mean, I mean, we're not going to notify you of meetings for other boards. Well, this right. one was Do in you the mean newspaper. Um, oh, we, for, for an RDA, a request for determination, it has to be advertised it's in the newspaper. It's a public notice. Right. Okay. But it's uh, not uh, okay. a butter notice. Okay. If a planning board, okay. it would and, be it. And as an abutter, when things warm up to this, you're. I would assume that you're going to get notification directly, like a registered or certified letter, um, as things pro progress. But uh, I'm not going to guarantee you'll get notified. Thank you for your indulgence sure. and the commission's indulgence. Okay. So what are we looking for? Yeah, we're looking for a negative. I'm just not sure what number to give it. Yeah. I mean, I would say the, the word could be a negative, and I could definitely now that we know that the line is not the stone wall at the back, which is where I was walking, you know, because it wasn't staked out. If I could find those two staked corners, um, yeah, just on the, on the northern end there, um, then we could go out there and take a measurement from the wetland to, yeah. to the property line. And that way, it may, you know, you wouldn't have to file again. Well, it, we could oh, regulate the work. Why don't either you or, or Mr. Tedeschi or somebody from the project yeah. get with Pat so it would save him some time and yeah if I, if I knew that was a concern prior to tonight I would have staked that but yeah we can certainly walk well we can get it like it ends out. further than it, it does yeah. the, you know I think figure figure two in the notice of intent is very clear but I can certainly stake it out in the field okay all right so what number Negative one, two, three. It's uh, you can do the negative on the work, whatever that is. Carol's two or three. The work to be performed would not three. impact. I do believe. I make a motion for a negative three. Of course, I can't find my stuff right now. There it is. The work described in reference and document is within an area subject to protection. No, that wouldn't be it. If I said no. Oh, I'm looking at pause. Pardon me. Um. Was there anybody else in the audience? Anybody else? Any? Yes, sir. I was going to say we might just make it a negative because there's no resource area, just a negative. I had a question: How they were going to access the equipment? into the field, would it be off of Whittier or would it be from 40 country uh, we've, we've done some testing already. We've accessed off of Curtis Street. So is that how you'd access that? Do you know? Yes. Okay. So a negative two? Just no, just a plain just negative. A, just a plain negative. Just a plain know. negative because there's no resource equation. area. Requires no further oversight by the commission, providing the work proceeds as pr proposed. Well, negative one is the area described in the request is not an area subject to protection under the act or the buffer zone. Ultimately, that's what I want is a negative one. It sounds like. But we don't know exactly how far away that is yeah. or anything else. So right. We all so have to the give negative something. two is the, the work. Yeah. Okay. I think I will make a motion for a negative two. Second. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And you're going to.
get with Pat and yeah, you, you know, as long Pat, as long as you're there, I mean, you can tell pretty quick. You might even want to go onto that piece that is along with your drive. Just take a quick look around. All right. If you're gonna go, is that an empty lot right now? Yes. yes. You know, if and if yeah. you're gonna go, give me a holler and. Thank you. Um, so we can go into the notices. Biviano, Six Cliff, Septic. This is um, a continued hearing from um, before, and we got an okay from the Board of Health. Is there some revised plans? Yeah, I got it from the Board of Health. So there were any changes? The only the change was that. Um, and yeah, just for the record. Michael Biviano, Michael Biviano, General Patrachis. We, um, we had sent the information out to the state after being approved by the Board of Health. And the state uh, rejected the plan because two foot four inches to the water table. So we went back out as a recommendation and we reparked it again and established the water table. And we came up with, I don't even have a plan in front of me, but we submitted them. Board of Health, and we ended up with uh, the state said we had to get a minimum of three feet to the water table, and I believe we got uh, thirty-nine point five to the uh, water table. So the state uh, DEP has already approved it. Uh, Jennifer had spoken to Pat today in regards to it, saying that it was just a, a formality and, uh, you know, we'd like to close the hearing uh, because everything else is in order. Did all this stay in the same place, Mike? No, it did move slightly towards the ocean. And the reason being is because the town came down and mocked out the water line. And they mocked out the water line and the septic system was going to be very close to it. so what they did was they excuse me rosemary can you just ask if they take the conversation down the hall i don't want to really close the door but can you please take your conversation down the hall with the thank you thank you yeah. sorry what we did was we had to, to move the leaching fields behind the mm -hmm existing septic tank instead of in front of the existing septic tank. Okay. So this is basically driven by the existing conditions and it's not a big shift. Right. Anybody? You no, want, I, I mean, there's really not much to see no. here. Are you all set with it? Yeah, that? Jennifer came down and explained it today. DEP was okay with it. So. Okay. Okay. Motion to close. Anybody else there? Oh, I'm sorry. Anybody in the audience? Thank you. I make a motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> I'm going to give that back to Pat. <coughs> um, Clark, Central Ave, boat trailers, floats, and property. Good evening. For the record, you are Russell Clark, number eight, Webster Street, Home Rock. Thank you. Um, so I guess we got a request that you wanted to continue this. On um, the fact, um, Lenore White, who I hired, um, was scheduled to be here on Wednesday. When we did change to Thursday, she has another obligation, so she could not be here to represent and help me out. Okay. So that's why we requested for a uh, continuous. To our next meeting? Yes. Okay. Pat, do you have any? Uh... I mean, there's, there's two ways the commission can vote on this. Um, you know, we've been asking for information, and it's been coming in in dribs of grab. We haven't received what we wanted. The commission can either vote to extend, or the can, commission can vote to deny the, um, you know, the order of conditions uh, I mean, on this because of the delays. So. Um, 
you know, usually when we, we open up a hearing, we give people an opportunity to submit what they need to submit, get the wetland stuff in. The wetland stuff came in and was wrong. The, you know, there was some things that were missing. So he's requested an extension, and it's perfectly within your right to grant an extension, or if you don't want to, you don't have to. Okay. I, I just don't understand why we didn't even get a notice of intent, the paperwork. You didn't file that. We asked you to file that. You didn't abbreviate. So I'm just so, totally disenchanted at this point. Bill? Um, I, given the fact that it's a weird week and that the date is off, I'm kind of inclined to say that uh, we also have a hearing in. Hope to God we have everything that we need. Okay. Richard? I'm okay, we're moving it ahead. What's the next meeting? 16th. And you'll be ready? A week from Monday. So the, I'm An email I received a I'm, couple we'll, we'll have time for everybody to talk, but okay. th this goes through the commission. Email I received from Lenore, I have it here, I can pull it out. No, it's fine. She planned on the 16th. Yeah, and I think that was sent to you as well. Yeah. On the request for uh, Paul? No, nothing. And I'll, I'll call her tomorrow morning. Kevin? I don't know. Going, this has been going on. It's like a game. It's like a joke at this point. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Past for now, I guess. I, I understand, like, you're thrown off by the days, everyone can be at some point, but you know, this should have been done like months ago. So, yes. why, why are we even still talking about this? Uh, I don't know. I don't okay. know what else to say. I, I am going to open it up to the audience, but it's going to be fairly quick because we're not talking about the resource areas, the project. We're just looking for a time. I, I realize that several folks are frustrated that this has gone on and that's why I asked sometimes we can just continue it and you would have just got an email or a letter saying we continued it to the next piece we didn't we wanted Mr. Clark to come in and explain why he, why we're he wanted this to be continued so I, I don't want to go launch into a whole another piece tonight we have a whole long list of things to do and and there'll be time to dispute if, if we decide to continue it um, There'll be opportunities to go through all these areas. So, um, yes, sir. Uh, Keith Jansen, 148 Central Avenue. Yeah. Uh, I think you guys know me by now. Yeah. I promise not to go through every one. Well, However, Keith, I think the discussion tonight is whether we're going to continue this. Or well, not. Uh, to that point, I think it's immaterial that his person couldn't be here, and here's why. This is the fifth time Mr. Clark's gone before this board. And the fact that she was going to be here to tell you that she did do a complete job would have been inappropriate. I agree with you, it is a joke. So one of the uh, Conservation Commission said, in fact, that three strikes and you're out. This is the fifth strike. When you look at uh, the exact outline of what the Wetland Protection Act stands for and the components that this board is supposed to protect, there are several components taken right from the Wetlands Protection Act that say this uh, type of behavior should not happen, including a proposed um, uh, a proposal for an NOI, not an after the fact NOI. This is the fifth time we've gone through this. If I raise a hand, how many people are here for the subject matter? Keep your hands up if you want to see the complete removal of the material immediately. Well, well but you know what, I, I appreciate, that's not what we're doing here tonight. Well, we're asking for you to deny the submission and say, you know what, you've had five chances. Okay. I agree with you, it, it has become a joke. And the time that we're wasting should have been handled five meetings ago. So I'm sorry if I'm wasting your time right now, but it's not a fact from what I produced or what I didn't produce. Mm -hmm. And I know there are a number of other people who want to speak, so I will stand down. Thank you. I've lived in Hummock a long time. Your, your name, sir? Richard Wood, 144 Hummock, Central Avenue. On my bylaws from the town, not from the town, but from the people that sold the property to all Hummock, 
The premises are conveyed subject to the following restrictions. No tents, trailers, or temporary buildings may be placed on said property. No business may be conducted on said property. No outside toilets. No signs for advertising purpose shall be erected or placed thereon. No dwelling will be erected on said property costing less than a thousand unless plans are approved by vacation. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Woods. Yes. Uh, what does that come from? From the bylaws of the the whole town when this property was sold to different people. Uh, Everybody agreed to these bylaws. I think it's a restricted covenant placed on the purchase of the property. Right. This is a covenant for all the homes in Hummerock? All of the, yes, because they all were on the vacation homes. That's this property. And this is what they said. I'll be glad to let you see it. Well, but you know what? So that's something that you probably want to submit to the commission as part of well, the... I think the whole thing is a ridiculous thought. You, are, you people know that he's not supposed to be there with his property. He snuck it down in the middle of the night. He's made a junkyard out of the area. He dropped three big um, buoys because he's in that business. And those, he probably got paid to take them off, but he dumped them there instead of paying them to whoever to take them away. And also, the other two trailers he did, they're, they're obnoxious, and they're an eyesore. So I'm very disappointed that the town has gone on with allowing even to him have them there. You say you sent him a letter to remove them, shows your authority. So I'm here to say my authority should exceed your authority because it's wrong. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, Robert Planker, 164 Central, a summer president. Um, I spoke last time. Um, I think the frustration all of us have with the continuance, uh, there are other issues here besides the continuance, but that's been substantially addressed by a lot of us, and uh, I won't repeat that at, at this point. But if you want to know why the average citizen is frustrated with government, you know, I don't know if it's true, but you people get a bad rep because everyone says, oh, but Conservation Commission this, the Conservation Commission that. But the moment, the moment someone tries to put a little cement on their own property that, that really probably doesn't really bother anyone, and doesn't bother any neighbors for, for, for half the time that they're trying to do a small project, you people, before they do something, have put the fear of God in them and, 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 and take them through a rigmarole. And yet this goes on for months and months and months. Um, with, where, where it could have been requested in advance. Now, whether someone is well-connected, well-liked, or mistaken, or uh, uh, complacent, or non-complacent, I mean, all these things, uh, uh, how many times do I have to keep coming here? I'm sorry, your, your name again, your first name? Robert. Robert. I, I'm, uh, I'm Robert, just I, saying that, you know, I've rearranged my schedule three times, and it's not easy to keep coming back. And, and I'm very discouraged that, at a minimum, that, that you don't either say, remove what's there, and then, and then start with a proper permit or request to begin with, and then see where that goes, or, or, or deny the merit of it in the absence of all the requests you've made. How, how many times, I mean, we're going to schedule this on, eventually on Christmas Eve? I mean, I, there's an awful lot of people that couldn't come last week time. There's a lot of people that signed a petition that made their uh, 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 that made their uh, feelings known. And Mr. Clark has friends and, 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 and he has people that are upset with what he's doing, uh, but it's not from my regards uh, personal. On the other hand, it, it, just, it just bothers me that, um, excuse me, I'm I'm sorry, I get back to the, the, the final, the one, the point. Well, you, you people, you people can, 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 can tie someone up and frustrate it, the average citizen who, who's trying to do a little job that, that no one complains about, really, for the most part. And yet, when you have someone that's really on a slippery slope here in pristine, natural, what's left of Hummerock, and it, 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 it goes on forever. It, 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 it's inconsistent, and it's unconscionable to me that, that you could harass a, a small homeowner for 
a little cement. Some I guess I would take that personal well, at some point. You're telling me that I'm this board harasses people in Hamrock? If, 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 if I, I'm not, no, I, 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 you know I, what? I didn't say it personally, I, no, you, sir. No. I, I don't mean it personally. I only mean that, that everyone's frustration is that you, you can't put a little cement here or you can't do this, that without with, 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 without Big Brother uh, deciding everything in many cases that doesn't bother anyone and no one's complaining about. Here you've got 20 abutters that, that have really some strong feelings and, and, and saying you're opening up a slippery slope uh, for, for lots of other areas perhaps that, 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 that could follow suit. And you don't want to discriminate against them, but it seems to me, uh, you know, for 20 of us or more, you, you, I don't think you should be discriminating for just, him. Just before, just before, and, I, and I, I, we really have a lot of things to do here tonight, and it's going to be up to the board to decide that. But just before him, Mr. Biviano was here. Now, that was a continuance for several meetings while we waited for the state to decide the correct elevation and the Board of Health. That, that septic system went on for several Since months, May. if I'm not mistaken, so that they could get this right. Uh, and and I'm, that's not an exaggeration. I, I, we, we have plenty of hearings that come before us that we do continue. I understand your frustration that these trailers are parked here. If Mr. Clark were excavating in that area or, or, or really disturbing that dune, I think the commission would be there to stop that. Right now we have a couple of trailers parked on the dune and I'm not trying to downplay that or, or anything else, but I personally feel that he needs to be able to put that information forward. I'm frustrated. I don't want to be here at a meeting with a bunch of upset folks. Believe me. And I'd like it to be even for all the folks in Hummer Rock. There's a lot of folks, like probably yourself, that do the correct thing and file ahead of time. But I can tell you that there's plenty that do not. And whether it's Hummer Rock or Peggotty Beach or the glades or whatever, after a storm, there's a lot of activities that go on that the commission barely has a chance to take a look at or has a chance to act on. And, and, and may, some of them might have been on your properties prior to you own it. I mean, I'm assuming that everybody that's here does do all the filings that they're supposed to and, and, and comes before us or, or tries to do that. I'm, I'm assuming because you're here asking him to do it, that you've done the same, and that's why you're, you're here. And, and I appreciate that. And we want to make sure that we get it right, because each one of you, in time, will probably have some sort of filing to come before the commission. Well, I'm not arguing that, sir. I'm simply trying to express the, you know, an average citizen's frustration, similar to this gentleman, to some degree, that, that you, you just reach a point for, for, for what the questions and the issues that were on the table. And, uh, and, and, and again, I'd like to get it resolved. I'd like to get the right answer. I'd like to hear from the applicant. I'm frustrated that we don't have it in front of us. But to, but to be in the audience and say things like cronyism and I things like that, that, well, I, I heard that. I heard someone say that. OK. So you know what? We don't volunteer for that. I think there's th three folks right from Hummerock because we, Hamarok is a big part of the filings that go on here. And, and I, am I, I, I really. My, my frustration that, 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 that take it as feedback at, 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 at what you hear. It may be, it may be rotten press. It may be 90% untrue. I'm simply saying that the average person is very frustrated by, you know, little things that they maybe try to do that they're, they can't do, that they're scared to do, and you have to do all this up. And, and I think to Mr. And, and it seemed to me, it was, it was said that, excuse me, but it, and this is my final point, but it seemed to me at the last meeting, he was given much time and, and, and extra time, would that be enough to get in everything that they needed? And it's my understanding he didn't. Well, I, I don't want to have to come back and say, Okay. Thank you. I mean, Thank it's, you. It's not for us to move the Thank you. Anybody else? 
So, I guess the vote is to continue, I, and we can vote this. Whether we want to continue this or not. Somebody else can make a motion. So do I have a motion to continue or to close? I'll make a motion to close it. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Do I vote to close the meeting? All in favor say aye. Aye. So we have one or two? Two. I second the motion. And then I asked for a vote to close the hearing. Yeah, so I'll second it. Two. two. So can we talk about that for a minute? So what does that, what is that, where does that Well, if it us? doesn't give, have enough votes, then that dies. And we could vote to continue, and we can have a motion to continue. If we close it, then the enforcement order goes back and the stuff has to be removed. Is that correct? We close the hearing and then look. I it was an abbreviated notice of intent filed. We've asked for a full notice of intent, and we haven't received that. So if you're closing it, it's based on what we've received, and that's an abbreviated notice. But um, there would be a vote to either approve or deny. Can I comment on that? Sure. The full notice of intent would have been here last night had we had the meeting last night. Lenore. Knew she wasn't right. going to be here, and that's and the point I tried to make. It, it, it's just the meeting changed, and we found out about a week and a half ago. That's from, from a standard protocol, Keith Jansen, one forty eight central. Isn't it protocol to submit your notes of intent at least ten days prior to the meeting? So even if it showed up last night, it would have been in the material. Things should be in the in here ten days before. Yes, sir. So again, we stand. You know, we're asking the board to deny. And if Mr. Clark wants to uh, uh, go through the TEP, you know, appeal process, he has that right. Mm -hmm. Showed up at five meetings so far, and but we, but again, we have had numerous meetings where things have been continued because of people trying to get the correct information or, or whatever. I appreciate it. When the state's holding up, it's one thing. Well, not just the state, but just in terms of our members requesting additional information as well. I, I think my plan was submitted on a. August 28th, 2013. Okay. But revised. It's not a complete for It doesn't have all everything on it. I'll make a motion then to deny the project on the abbreviated notice of intent. Okay. Have a second? I'll we'll second that. All those in favor of denying the project on the abbreviated notice of intent? Aye. So do I have a motion to continue this till, what's the date? 16th. 16th. Oh, September 16th. I'll make a motion to continue it to the 16th. With the understanding that this is not tacit approval of anything that's going on. The only reason that I'm doing this is because the schedule was screwed up this week and I think that it's the right thing to do. I understand the frustrations. It does not mean by any stretch of the imagination that we're giving any tacit approval to anything that's going on. All I'm asking for is to get the information in front of us so we can make an educated decision. I'd okay. like a little discussion here at the last meeting. I think we need a second first. Oh, all right, get a second. Have a second? Well, second. Okay. Now, can I discuss? At yep. the last meeting, it was made very clear to Mr. Clark when the meeting was going to be. It gave him, I, I myself said to him, you get an extra day because we're not meeting Wednesday, we're meeting Thursday. It was stated at that point in time. That's why I am so frustrated that the information did not get in on time. We still don't have all the information in. It's just... You were told very specifically what to do at the last meeting. You knew when the meeting was, and now we're having excuses because of the scheduling. It was scheduled at that last meeting that you were here. You were told. You didn't get told yesterday or last week that the meeting was changed. That's all. So you can do what you want. Anybody else? 
So I have a motion and a second. All in favor of continuing till the 16th? Aye. 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 I just mentioned that anybody who is an abutter or an interested person that should sign in the sheet for attendance. So is, is, um, is it still in the That's like the letters he sends out. Yeah. Excuse me? You're exasperating. I understood you sent letters to tell me to take those trailers off of the land. You said you had to take them off and it was going to be a fine. That didn't happen. He snuck them in. He's not going to sneak them out. Yeah. Can I just make one comment on this project? Um, when we find a violation of the Wetland Protection Act, we ask people to remove it. They say, can I file to see if this is something that can be continued? We said, if you're not removing them, you do need to file. So once you file, then it becomes part of the bigger system. It's a filing with DEP, it's a filing with us. There are rules we have to follow. Anybody that asks for uh, you know, continuance with cause, with a good reason, we grant the continuance. In this case, maybe it wasn't a good reason to continue, but but we, this is, if, if we didn't make them file, and we were just allowing this to go on without anything, it's very legitimate what you're saying, but it's part of this, you know, filing process right now. So we're following the rules, and there's a choice that could be made. It could go either way. There's really no right or wrong. He's not given any, any extra slack about what other people can could request. Can I add one more piece to that? Before Mr. Bibiano, there was a fellow here for a shed. The, the orders for that project said no shed on the project no shed on the property. Somewhere after that project was done, someone erected a shed. Then when they went to sell the project, they couldn't get their certificate of compliance because there was a shed there. The person was trying to sell a house. The commission granted the certificate of compliance with the agreement that the shed would be removed. The papers were passed on to this person. They're aware of it. The person came back and said, you know what? We'd really like to keep the shed. We'd like to have a hearing before you. I, you, I think most of you are here to hear that. Your, 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 your point is that the commission is uncaring or heartless or doesn't deal with people fairly. My, my point is that I think that we do, that we take all these people's cons issues into consideration. If, the, if law, the bylaw says, by that land, not so to tonight, so tonight we should have told that man to rip his shed down and then come back for no, filing. I don't think that at all. Well, I think that, that you know you have this land is flooded when there's a flood. This so isn't the location trailer. where that shed was? Not as bad. Well, this thing, those trailers are going to loosen. Okay, I, I think. I'm not going to argue. Me, me neither. We're going to continue it, and we're going to have the right process. Let's hope so. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. My name is Bar Barbara Urbanski. I'm 150 Central Ave. Hi, Mrs. Urbanski. Thank you. Um, at the last meeting, Mr. Clark was asked not to put anything more on the property. Does that still go yes. into effect? Yes. Yeah. All right. And if something more should appear on the property, what what are the recourses that we? I don't think we can shoot him. Well, but <laughs> what once things have been continued, we really can't take. Questions and debate. Oh. You know, once we've continued okay. to a, a future date, yeah. um, the applicants. Not but if there. if you if there's anything else that goes on on that property, let us know. I know that some people feel that's just a waste of time, but we'd appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. We're going to keep holding these hearings. We would appreciate it if you make sure you sign that sheet. Okay. Um, Gordon, Ocean Avenue, new build and septic continued. The other thing I can request, we act, excuse me, we're going to keep having hearings, so if you have a conversation, please do it out by the door or out in the front of the town hall. Building restriction with the camera. It's a long time. 
Right. Thank you. Right. Even, yeah, but it's not. I'm going to have yeah. to have an attorney at our meetings. To oh, no, no, we don't want that. <laughs> we, this, this is going to be long enough as it is. Bill, Bill's enough to deal with, huh? <laughs> Gentlemen, yeah. uh, Bill Arthur and with Greg Morris, yeah, and uh, just before I turn this over to Greg, uh, in a nutshell, after the, uh, I understand is after the last hearing in the in the commission on site on this, there was uh, there was some drainage work both on Ocean Avenue and then on Bailey's Causeway that Greg designed. He submitted to DPW Engineering and met with them, and I understand from Pat that I think. Uh, the director got back and said yes. No more we some Alabama and DPW. That was the drainage Frank had mentioned it when we were out there. Yeah. Just when we did this on site, they suggested this water coming up. Well, maybe um, Greg can explain it. Okay, I'll turn over to Greg. I mean that yeah, just give you a little backdrop mm -hmm. on history, so DPW's on both streets. Uh, go ahead. So at, at the last meeting, I presented the, the filing for, for a new single family home on this property. We conducted the on site. And while we were on site, um, you know, we were talking with a couple of the abutters, uh, specifically Mr. Thompson. Is there anybody project. that would like to see this map that can't yeah. see it? Um, Greg, why don't you turn that? Oh, um, Maybe you actually take it over here. Sorry, we're going to get it over here so hopefully most of the commission members can see it. You never know what side is set up. I know. Well, so when we were out there, we we heard concerns about some flooding within Ocean Ave itself, Ocean Ave right here. This is kind of a low point in the Ocean Ave roadway network. You have water that flows in from Bailey's Causeway. You have water coming down Ocean Ave, and you have water coming in from Birch Lane across the street. Yet there's no drainage improvements here. So there's been kind of a, a little swale built along the road. There's been some washout along the edge of the road. Uh, the neighbor's driveway has puddled, and he's kind of dug a little swale at the edge of his driveway to alleviate the, the water. So what we did is we've designed a new deep sump hooded catch basin at that location so that now we're actually going to get drop out of sediment into a catch basin sump. And that sump then discharges into the wetland here via a new head wall that we're constructing. And along this edge of Ocean Ave, we're proposing to install a tape pumper to hold up that edge of the road and to install riprap where necessary to stabilize the embankment there. So now you won't have a puddling effect along Ocean Ave and it alleviates that flooding concern. Yep. The water that we're directing here into the resource area is the water that's already going there. It's just right now it's flooding. We're directing it underground through the catch basin system. That was reviewed by DPW and I understand they've accepted that design. Um, we've also added at the entrance of the downstream culvert, this whole resource area drains toward <coughs> Bailey's Causeway in the northern corner of the property. And what we've proposed there is to install a new riprap sediment trap before that pipe and to clean out that entrance pipe, that head wall. There's you know, been an accumulation of sediment there over time. Um, but we feel that by cleaning that up and now providing a sediment trap up here, you know, that's going to enhance this wetland in addition to the other mitigation that we were proposing with the project was detailed in a report by Environmental Consulting and Restoration, which was in a, a total invasive species <coughs> within the wetland and the buffer, bless you, and then a complete revegetation with native species within that buffer zone and within that resource area. There were a lot of invasives um, that were noted. Glad to go over any of the specifics again on the plan if you have any questions. But really, the changes since the last meeting were the additional drainage as signed off by DPW. That was the primary uh, change to the plan. When, um, for those of you that weren't on the site visit, when we were out there, we walked around with the, Mr. Thompson 
the owner of the property on the square and looking at some of his concerns and the largest concern he had was this water that was coming off of Birch Lane is a gravel road that's above this across from Ocean and that that water runs down with a lot of sediment and it runs into his property and so we're maybe looking for an alternative to keep that water from shedding and then actually getting into this wetlands area which sort of acts like a filter a little bit so that's was what the outcome of that on-site which they helpful sometimes you know having an on-site mm -hmm. with the people that are abutting it just to see what what's out there um, Penny when we were out there we also talked um, about a little cleanage like the the swale itself when it co it's com coming um, towards Bailey's Causeway it looks like um, there had been some digging at time on the sides and would that all encompass when you revegetate when you clean that out and revegetate yeah, because, it? because any of the, any of the roadway sediment that's accumulated in there would be taken out you know and then the whole area is revegetated so okay now because you are in the 50 foot where the building's going <laughs> and i'm not a real fan of people in the 50 foot but i do see some be benefit here where you are going to make the wetlands functional and nice again um i'm looking at maintenance down the road it is on his property the wetlands would he be willing to have an order in there that he would have to maintain this wetlands and keep all the invasive stuff out of it yeah we could be, have, because we yeah, do we can have a condition the, that you can have a condition that you know uh, that Brad and Greg will set up an operation and maintenance plan that's continuing condition. Yeah, to keep that clean. Uh, one other thing, I um, there was a concern from Mark when we were out there that when you clean out a lot of the stuff there, all of a sudden he's going to see where now it's so tall. Um, a lot, a lot of the growth was tall, so Mark had his privacy. The one neighbor that would be there. Well, I think we have to be careful that yeah. we're not dealing with view issues specifically, but that we want to make sure that the, if the wetlands enhanced, it's enhanced with the correct. Well, that's what I'm plans. saying. Are there yeah. taller wetlands well, plants it, that? Actually, Penny, and, and again, he's not here. I thought Mark was kind of. Yes, he is here. He's right behind you. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I missed it. Yeah, I, I, I sent right right earlier today. Jeez, you could have had me speak for well, There were a little bit of communication problems, apparently. So, uh, speak for yourself. So. Well, look, we, we just got st we just helped reopen and, and essentially to discuss the drainage piece. Um, they just they said they were going to add this drainage piece at, at Ocean Ave which we discussed we were on site to deal with runoff from um, Birch Lane um, and then discussing the, the wetlands area and how that will be um, either enhanced or or maintained so that's where we're at um, and what we do at the moment is work our way along the with the different members and then an opportunity for the abutters to to speak so those, those were my concerns that you know we that you really enhance it and make that a really thriving wetlands area would be really nice where you are in the buffer Bill I don't have any questions thanks neither do I no questions Kevin no questions um, Pat do you want to speak yet or do we want to get the audience um, all right, anybody um, yes sir um, I was just your ad, your name. And oh, I'm sorry, Jane Davidson. Yeah. And I'm at 32 Bailey's Causeway, which is right here. Yeah. So I just have a question about these two. Okay, not berm, which I'm not familiar with, or the the drainage. So when they clear this out, one sort of they said the water will be turned back into this channel. And let Mr. Morse um, explain how that'll work. I guess. So and the rain that runs down or the water that runs down will go in here and it will go underground or it will go just fed into the... Yeah, so the, 
this, this location here is a new catch basin, a grate on the surface where the water will fall into that grate and then it discharges in a pipe to this location right okay. here. And it'll flow over land like it currently does through the wetland, there's kind of a channel through there right now. Um, in addition to, to this plan, we had submitted a planting plan you know, that goes along with it. And these, are the, these are the specific plantings we were talking about throughout the wetland here. But this is all overland flow. The pipe is at this location. Right. Maybe what would help, Greg, is where do you think that that water flows now? The, the water that's going to go into that basin um, do you have? Because what I'm saying is it gets down here and then does it stop? No. So, so the water that gets into this wetland resource currently runs down here and then it enters. There's a head wall right here with a pipe that goes under. And that pipe ends up across the street off of um, Bailey's Causeway out there in the salt marsh and it discharges to the salt marsh. So water will continue to discharge into that pipe. Okay, and this new improvement, because this area, when it does rain, not so much the water coming down, but just the, from the sky, yep. it overflows. So this will improve that and will able, the water will be able to... It, it will improve it because what's happened is, is over time there's been a lot of roadway sediment that's mm -hmm. gotten in there and it's, it, it's filled in that channel, it's filled in the invert of that pipe and we're proposing to remove all of that sediment and in front of that pipe to install a riprap sediment trap so that you're not getting the silts ending up in the pipe. The silt will settle out within the riprap trap in front of it. Okay, and I think you had mentioned about continuing with that. Yeah, the that, maintenance. You know, two years from now, maybe if the person that's building this is no longer here, and then this becomes a problem. We, we yeah. call those continuing orders okay. so that that would go with the property, it would go on the deed. Okay. And the same as if you had a detention pond or if you were supposed to maintain okay. something like that. It should be in the orders that that would be something that goes with the, the owner. Property. It's not just for the specific owner, it goes okay. with the property. And then my other question was just sort of about the sound. Um, will there be sound associated with this, sort of as the, the water? I think you mentioned something about a pump or a maybe no. a pump exists now. No, there's but, but there's it's just we won't even know it's there. No. And there'll be no sound. You said no. something. Oh that's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Well hopefully there'll be the sound of like Aquatic animals or yes. birds or frogs. Or frogs. frogs. Yeah, there is yes. that would be enhancing the like frogs. frogs. Yeah. Um, Great, is the um, this sub fall here? That's on town property, right? That would be it is town a maintained. That's within the right yeah, of way. You guys are going to fix it, and they're going to maintain it all the time. Correct. I mean, it it appears to us when we walked the site that that was excavated. That there was there's a depression there, maybe in back of Mr. Thompson's, and then to keep that drained over time it was actually excavated because there's kind of evidence of a trench with the material that came from that sort of placed on the side so it looks like over time this was has been maintained maybe by the Gordon family or something long ago I mean it hasn't been done in a very long time but there's evidence that that had been altered in the past okay. and just one final question we tried to look when we were there we tried to look across the street we really couldn't see where the I think what might be a good idea, and, and I'm just shooting from the hip a little bit on that one, but Mosquito Control has jurisdiction to clean out all those gullies and stuff pretty easily, and, and maybe we could put in a request. If that's holding stagnant water, the whole pri their, their priority is to get all that moving, and they've done that through many places. I have no idea what kind of backlog they have or whatever, but it's probably town proper. Maybe it's yours. I'm, I'm not sure. You don't want to own it? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it definitely is like the marsh. It's yeah. The so I'm wondering if, if... And then it would quickly connect to the other, the creek. Yeah. But it's just that this is... I think there's stuff in there too. Yeah. It's full of junk. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, we kind of had that happen in a lot of places this year with the storm where so much debris and things got into water drainage areas. Well, we can talk to public works too. I mean, I think they maintain the pipes as they come out from under the streets. Right. Yep. Uh, anybody else? Mark? Uh, Mark Thompson, 26 Bailey's Causeway. And I apologize for coming in late. And, and I was, I was the only one bothered by that is Mr. Armberger. Well, <laughs> well I'm not bothered at all. <laughs> I, I put in the, uh, a request earlier to, to hopefully continue to the 16th, but somewhere along the way that may have gotten lost in the shuffle. But um, over the course of the past couple of weeks, I've talked to Al Banner and Kevin Cafferty as far as um, what the impact would be for the work that's proposed as far as improving the drainage um, and how that might help us and also been talking to Mr. Orenberger about the work that they're going to do. Um, my hope with pushing it off for a couple of weeks was just to be able to get my hands around the totality of how the whole package comes together and then where we're going to wind up. Um, I know that they've been working hard to try to put together some mitigation here to, to address what is going to happen with the drainage and then um, I guess as Penny has said what's going to happen with the replanting of the, the wetlands material. Um, so my hope is that if everything's pushing together in the right direction, we can look at things and say everything's going to work out. Um, that, that was why I was hoping for a couple more weeks, just to okay. start looking at where things going to wind up. I see. I, I, I guess I'm unaware. Yeah, that, and I have been working with Mark and his wife uh, to, to make sure we address any issues which they have. What, what I'd have, what I'd just suggest, Mark, is because I think what the normal protocol is, if all the information is in, they close the hearing, and then at the meeting on the 16th, you would vote to set an order on this thing. And what, what I what I would ask is that we will have your wife and yourself, and I'll, I'll talk to you afterwards, address any concerns which you have. We have no obligation to do that. So before this thing is voted, you can report at the, at the next meeting on the 16th that all your concerns are addressed. Okay. Between yesterday and today, Al Bang and Kevin looked at it and gave us a letter that said that this one more thing would I talked to Al briefly this morning. So. Right. But in, in fairness, Bill, if we close tonight, yeah. essentially we can't, this can't change without some sort of amendment. We're not looking at changes because any of the things I'm talking to with the Thompsons, I'm going to do a, that we're going to help them is related to it's non locus it's on their property. So the project which is approved here, we're not, you know. But we, we don't really have jurisdiction over that. I guess what I'm saying is, is if there's something that's in this plan that, um, once we close, we can't take any more information from you or from the applicant or whatever. Once, once we close this hearing, we don't take any more information in. Right. And so if, if he would, to, and and typically it's it's not the abutter that can request a continuance. It's either us or or the applicant um, that would request that, not someone else, unless there was more information. I mean, the only thing we really got for additional information, short notice, is the approval from the town for this basin, which is kind of a tip, typical that it winds up getting it at the last minute. Um, so, um, let me ask, can I ask one question? Sure. Mark, based on what I said, you come to look and closing the hearing and not voting it? If it's going to be voted in two weeks, yeah. Okay, but, but we can't change anything. Understood. It is, it has a commission. Does the commission feel they have all the information in the file that they need to set it I'd like to revisit what I was talking about when Mark walked in and kind of got cut off there. I'm not asking. I'm Somebody just, cut you off? Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine that? I just didn't jump up and throw a hissy. But I'm asking for wetlands plants along the outer edge of the gully that are not two feet tall. Is there such an animal? Frank Wayne. Well, that's, that's, that's invasive. I right, know that. That's the one we want them to keep out of it. How about Norwood? Well, that too. Not weed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
we have what, what we've proposed are, are 40 shrubs. They are all two feet in height yeah. at their planting stage. They will grow over time, um, but they're all two feet at the time of planting. A high bush blueberry, you might get five or six feet out of that yeah. in a few years. Okay. Um, yeah, same with winterberry. Well, I just like it to look to look nice for everyone because it is a tank tank. I think we're supposed right to now. have enhanced habitat. No, no. I look we're not nice concerned for about the aesthetics. Even the critters. Even the critters. Can I ask a question? Sure. Mark, you were planning less than was proposed. I know I have. Yeah? I have. Oh. I mean, go out. That, that, that was kind of the totality thing that I was talking about, is just being able to look at all of that. I mean, it's really up to you. I, I know that you're trying to work with everybody to, to make sure we get this right. If, if, if you think a couple of weeks. Well, the, the dynamic is, to be frank with you, normally I'd just say fine. The dynamic is after the 16th, I'm having surgery on my knee, and I'm not going to be here for the next two meetings. That's what, that's what the issue is. Is the, <coughs> one more time, is the, the planting that's talked about, because obviously I'm not an expert on that, is that the best type of planting that would be? Well, there definitely will be wet, wetlands planting. That, that's what. Can we go to this plant? Why don't you come up for a minute and yeah. take a look? And Greg, um, just and we do have to keep moving. Um. The main order is going. One of the orders will be the planting. Do it there <laughs> and keep it maintained. So this this was our planting plan here with the shrubs interspersed throughout the resource area. Um, there's a list here that we provided in the narrative. Uh, winterberry, blueberry, sweet pepper bush, um, cinnamon firm, bayberry, witch hazel black chokeberry, sweet pepper bush, beech plum. Um, and these were all put together by our wetland scientist. And then in between the shrub plantings, we were going to use a wetland seed mix, which will grow in all of the other areas. I mean, what, what we get, I would, I would to yeah. we, we get a list, and Pat could f further enumerate on it, but we get a list of materials that are appropriate for wetlands and wildlife habitat. So we're not really concerned about whether these are all going to look like perfect Christmas trees. We want plants that are going to be good for the wildlife in that area. And so that's what we're looking for. So that's the type of of plants that that are going to be there. Um, one good point was made is that this should have a, a, a maintenance agreement that will follow with the with the property. It's not just going to be for that person, so that that can be maintained and kept clean and function like we'd like to see it. Um, you know, this has all been altered. It's it's not like it's a pristine place, and we have drainage that's coming down that you were good enough to, to show us. And so if we can make that runoff get cleaned up before it enters the marsh, it's, it's a winning situation in my mind for the commission. And that's what we're looking to do. And at the same time, um, you know, if it can be something that works for you or for the other neighbors, uh, it's, it's a win-win. What we're being asked to do is to, to waive the 50-foot buffer and, and let this project go forward in less than a 50-foot buffer. And there has to be a, a real compelling reason to do that. And if, if the commission feels that this enhancement and the filtering and the drainage outweighs the house being built or project being built close to the buffer, then we can condition it. If we didn't think that it would, then we would deny it. In a kind of a nutshell. I just ask a question: Is the uh, additional mitigation is that the offsite mitigation? That you're talking about? Yes. Because that would be outside what we're yeah, reviewing. That's right? it's it's I mean, that can right. take place Anytime. between the exactly. two of you guys. Yeah, that's I mean, we can close the hearing based on what we're getting. Yeah, I think so. that. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. I'll make a motion to close. close. A second. A second. Uh, with the, uh, with, with the mitigation of the planting, planting and the maintenance right. of they'll, the uh, they'll be train. at the next meeting. Yeah. Okay. And we'll put them in the orders. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thanks very much. Um, can you just oh, you enumerate a little back. bit more when the vote. hearing that went on yeah. before? Oh, yeah. Do we have a? Oh, yes. All in favor? We have to vote. Aye. 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 Thanks. 
So, so you, you know, and I, this is something I think my Pat, Pat or Carol might want to get back to. I think the his name was Mr. Woods, yeah. all, all, and he had a yeah, all, all in Hammerock when that was laid out. Whenever it was 1928 or whatever it is, it was all these what they call private building restrictions. All right, that you know setbacks. You can do this. You can't do that, and all this stuff. By state law, is if a restriction is unlimited as to time, which they are in Hammerock, they expire. and have no force and effect after 30 years. 30 years has been up for 30 years. So they have zero legal effect. What he was quoting. Yes. And, and, and that's one of the reasons, not to do that one specifically, but I think it's important to make sure that we get the information. Granted, they should have a time frame as to when to get it, but if we're going to have a hearing and take input, we want to make sure that get that input is correct. Yep. Right, exactly. Yeah, right. yeah now yeah. we're getting No, but covenants. sometimes when people bring things in, you just like, right. I, I just don't want a, a bunch of voodoo. Yeah. Right. right. But he's very. <sighs> Sheehan, 15 Seagate Circle, Elevate. Clarify something. I probably missed it, but the physical perimeters are staying the exact same, same. right? It's just yes. going up. No questions. Kevin? No questions. Pat? Yeah. Paul, hey, Paul, you know what? When we're trying to look over to see Pat, <laughs> like, just <laughs> don't stand in the way. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Is that where's where's where are you, Pat? I think it's personal though. 
but they're <laughs> excavating the uh, the common foundation and that's being taken off site. Oh, yeah. Okay, and if I don't see if there's erosion control on there, I think in the back. Uh, you know, I'm sorry, we don't show them. I can submit a plan with a silt sack around it. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I, I chose a silt sack for the U-shape around it because the land is so flat. We'll put it yeah. in the orders. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Frank. Is there anybody in the audience? <laughs> Rosemary? I don't know if the skirt around the concrete carries is planned or not, but is the commission clear that it is allowed? The FEMA recommends a skirt of different... Yeah, that was a concern from a prior member. But I understand I'm, that, but I wasn't, I've never been clear on whether everyone understood that. We just like to encourage you don't, but if they do, they yeah, they have a right to. What type of skirt would it be, Rosemary? Yeah. Cotton. 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 Um and this is in general, not particular to you, but that's my ongoing education here. Now the base of this, so it's gonna be up off the ground, it'll be concrete footings. Then what is the base? And what's underneath the house itself? It's soil. Yes, yeah, just, just it. open piers. Okay. Yes. Okay. It's like yeah. the ones on the beach. Just lift yeah. it. Okay, so we just leave leave it as soil as it is. Okay, right. great. Yep. Thanks. Thank you. Make a motion. Do we close this? A motion I make please. the motion to close. Is there anybody in the audience? Make a motion to close. Second. Yes. Oh, uh, wait, second. wait a minute, Gerald. I still can't see him over there. Yeah, we know the orders right ahead. Okay, so they can be closed and voted on tonight. Are they just standard orders? I would imagine. We'll just make sure we add that silt sock. You got a copy of it. Right. This is time sensitive for them to get the grant, get the whole things going. So Carol went above and beyond and was <laughs> scrambling to get notices, I mean, get the orders in okay. place. I didn't look this afternoon, but it's the silt sock, the Erosion control is kind kind of a standard order. It is, yeah. I'll check. I'll okay, just check. We'll, we'll write it in. Right. Okay. okay. So I make a motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then we end. And, 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 and we'll, and we'll do that at the end. Oh. We're not going to do the orders. Yeah. Okay. 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 Later in the meeting. Yeah. Okay. It's a two two pilot operation. It's actually in our agenda that way. Yeah. Make it stay. I'll get you some glasses so you can see through me. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be ugly. Um, <laughs> Whittle 22 Indian Trail. On September 5th, 2013, at 7 p.m., the Town Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing in the 131, Section 40. On the Massachusetts General Laws in Section 30700, Town of Citrus Code of Bylaws regarding the application of Dana Whittle to repair a septic system on property located at 22 Indian Trail, about it, situated. Butters and other interested parties are invited to attend. Again, for the record, Gregory Morris, Morris Engineering, representing Dana Whittle, who is the applicant and the property owner. This is a septic system repair project at 22 Indian Trail. Property line is shown in bold here. The existing house is a three bedroom house. Indian trails at the bottom of the plan. The resource that we have on site is a bordering vegetated wetland that is shown in blue. It was delineated by Brad Holmes during July of 2013, this year. Off of that, we have the 50 foot buffer in red and the 100 foot buffer zone in green. The existing septic system is right here in front of the house, approximately 55 feet from the wetland. What we're proposing to do is put in a fully compliant Title V septic system, consisting of a new septic tank and 1,000 gallon pump chamber, and then a new pressure dosed soil absorption <coughs> system. I've cited the soil absorption system as far away from the wetland as I can at the front of the lot. Uh, the tanks are required to be where they are to pick up the existing plumbing as it comes out of the house. Along the limit of work here, along the edge of the house, we've picked up, there's been an issue with downspouts at the corners of the house here, discharging water, and there's been a pocket of water there. So at that location, I've proposed just a crushed stone infiltration trench to handle some of the runoff from the roof and get it away from the foundation. And along the limit of work here, we've just proposed a silt fence at that down gradient 
limit of work. Uh, the Board of Health has approved this plan. I'll turn it over for any questions. Hey. I just have one real quick question. Is there a reason why the corner of the um, system there, the leaching field could, couldn't be moved 10 feet um, to the side there? To get it completely out of the hundred, you've done done a good job, but I'm just to get it out of the hundred. Yeah, it does, yeah, yeah. It doesn't have to be out of the hundred. I'm just asking a question. You'll kill more trees if you do that. Maybe that's yeah. Why. We were, to, the, the reason, if you see where the existing tree line is, yeah, yeah, we were trying to keep a little bit of the existing tree line for a buffer there, and we didn't want to push the system this way because we're proposing to save that. That's a Japanese maple. Okay. So that, that's why it's not. That's all. I just was curious. We, it's, you know. Yeah. Bill? Um, yeah. No, we're improving the septic issue. Yeah. And no, no questions. No, thank you. Greg, um, I don't, am I missing it on the plan? Just out of curiosity, where's the existing uh, cesspool? Or? So I'm, I'm labeling the existing tank right here. Oh, the okay. Leaching, the leaching is unknown. I got it, but yeah. It's right here in front of the house somewhere. Okay. Looks good. Kevin? No question. Pat? Yeah. We're encouraging septic uh, leaching field in the front of the house away from the wetland. And this is there. Yeah, unless the wetland's in the front of the house. And, <laughs> and there's, the pipes are everywhere, so I agree with the crushed stone, French drain type of uh, system on back. They must have a lot of water in the house. We could use you as a poster boy tonight on that one. <laughs> Aside from the 10 foot in the. <laughs> Anybody in the we'll audience? Take the Japanese maple. No, no, don't do that. That's why I wanted to ask. I make, I make a motion, motion to close. close. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ayers, 64 Moreland Road, upper level deck, first floor addition. Uh, Paul Marabito from Rosso J, representing the uh, applicant. Catherine Ayers, at the last meeting, we uh, two things, submit to you the structural plan, which you did, that was, that was recording, uh, and also, we have a grand home to prepare. Existing structure that's on the marsh all the way over to the existing wooden line on the southern part of the property. Grant has three different types of plants that are all uh, conducive to the salt water, uh, their salt water tolerant. Um, he has a proposed uh, mitigation task as well on the upper right hand portion of the plant. Pat, what's a high tide bush? I've never uh, heard of that. Yep, they're just beyond where the spot sign it grows. And uh, they went the golden rod. And yeah. There's a Latin name too, but I have no idea what it is. I've a. Uh, you say that? I didn't have any Latin in trade school. <laughs> oh, I don't think that says fructose. I, I can't pronounce it. I mean, Latin's as close to as Italian as you can get, Paul. Come on. I'm from the southern part, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is what I was looking for. Um, Penny? Um, I think this is what we asked for, and mm -hmm. thank you. And I we never did find that there were any other orders on this property, right? Carol, we looked for yeah. folders or anything. Uh, OK. We didn't mean to give that here. poor lady. Um, yeah, you were doing a good job of consoling her after the meeting. But it would be good to know if we have these projects, if there's any old orders or any, you know, if another, if a prior commission had some standing orders or something, we should know that coming into a meeting. Um, I did look into the um, history of the building. The building was, I went to the assessor's office. We did some online research with the deeds. Mm -hmm. What we found was um, the building was constructed in 1978. That's the same year the North River regulations were proposed. But that structure you talked about, 
Um, the original owners, I think Sullivan's, had purchased the property in 52, and their deed said they were purchasing the land only the same lot. In 1971, they sold it to the owners the uh, heirs bought it from, and their deed said they were purchasing the land and the, and the uh, building thereon. Well, the house wasn't there. Okay. But it's, so it had to be this. So it was a shed camp, that's camp in or something. Okay. Yeah. That was the question we yeah. had is when yep. did it go in? All right. So I'm saying that that was put there sometime between 52 and 71. Okay. okay. Um, anybody in the audience? Okay. Um, well, I, is anybody else out there? I've been out there. Cause yeah. It, yeah, one thing I noticed is a lot of trees have been removed to probably create a view. It might have been before this coming home over the water, but I mean, it seemed like there was a whole row of, of mature trees between the house and the marsh, mm -hmm. and they've been taken out. And it looks like that's the area where some of these footings are going to go in, and then it's kind of a steep drop off to the edge of the marsh where the plants are going to go. So, off. I mean, originally it was on fill. You can see where the fill line is. But I mean, I don't know who took the trees down, but there's several large ones that you know, provided shade and everything else along there that are now no longer there. Um, Do you think that they should add a few trees to this mitigation? Well, I mean, if, if somebody recently took them down, that's an issue too. They really can't be, you know, cutting down trees and it's within five feet of the marsh. Okay. So, um, and, and also it's, it's going to be tough to get erosion controls to fill and create a planting where you are without you know, a pretty good size silt, silt sock or something out there. Well, what, what, what we showed on the revised site plan we sent you as well, we put a silt sock along the edge of the wetland. That's an addition of the one just uphill for the house. So you'd have two silt socks there. You know, one along the planting area. Because the shrubs aren't that big, it's going to be done by, be done by hand. But that, that's just an added row of salt side for extra protection. And all the sauna tubes and the, and the posts now, they're all going to be eliminated. Yes. But the new footings are to the marsh side of where that currently is yes. by about five feet. And then where the, where the no. trees were cut. What, the new footing? Yeah. No, the new footing is going to be right underneath the existing post. So the same exact? The same location, right. Oh, no. so I think it was about a foot out. out. And then, and then we're, we're going to come out about four or five feet from there and start the planting, so go right down to the edge of the marsh. Yeah, it's a steep area. So yeah. No, I know. Very yeah. steep. Yeah. Well, very steep. steep. That's but it is a, a mess with that area, so this will... I mean, the uh, photos that we saw, and I, I took a quick ride by, and it is. Yeah. It's pretty... It's um, barren. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know. I can't... We did our survey some time ago, and that was the condition we noted because the photograph show that too. So, um, that they weren't there. How long have these folks owned it? They, they haven't owned it that long. Um, okay. Did we say 10 years last time? 10? Yeah, I thought we said 10 last time. It was on the, it was stamped on the plan, the, the old plan. Well, do you want to add, do you think we should add a few mature, some more, some trees to this? I don't know. I mean, there's a planting plan, but we're not encouraging tree removal just to create views. Well, yeah, but I don't. I'm, I but guess we don't know when it happened. Right, right. I mean, if they've owned it a short time, then it could have been any time. But we can still request some trees yeah. be planted in here. Yeah. How many trees do you think were cut down? Probably half a dozen. You know, good-sized trees. Um, maybe cut two feet off the ground. So there's actual stumps that are there? Yeah, stumps are there, yeah. They haven't rotted away, so it wasn't that long ago. Yeah. There's some rot on a few of them. Yeah, it, it's probably been a while since they were cut. But okay. I mean, but uh, since we've been involved, we saw photos of this maybe you know, six months ago, and they, were, they weren't They've already there. been gone. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's no reason that we can't add half yeah, a dozen. Yeah, I mean, if we think that's... We can do that in the orders. Yeah. I'll sit down with you. Okay. Put a couple of trees back. Throw some more in. Sure. Yeah, there's, I mean, it, mm -hmm. it was 
probably a row of trees all along all those houses, and some have kept them, and then there's spots where there's nothing. And right. Right. Yeah. Well, we can always compromise. Yeah, because no. yeah, there's several plantings proposed. Maybe we can substitute a couple with yeah. something that will some okay. substance. Paul, well, you can work with your client on that. Yeah, they they haven't owned the house that long. Um, I got a, I got the deed right here. Oh yeah, the deed. Well, sorry, regardless, I mean, I think part of the, what we were looking for is some mitigation for this work, and so part of that planting, we wanted to have some trees, mm -hmm. okay. along with the bushes and North River Happy too. Okay. Mm -hmm. 2010, I think they bought it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, 1990? No, it's All right. really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. No, well, I'm finding 2010 on the back. Okay. So we're going to close. Can we, uh, anybody else? Motion to close? I make a motion to close. Second. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, you. Thank you. We will work on those orders. Roach, 232 Central Ave, and large deck continued. And they want a continuance to the next meeting? Yes. Motion to continue Roach at 232 Central Ave. So, yes, so moved. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, I make a motion to continue Roach 232 Central Ave to 640 on September 16th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Goff, 19 Wood Island Road, raise and rebuild. Okay, so we have two things going on on Wood Island Road, right? Yes. Yeah. Is there anybody here for golf yeah. on yeah. Wood Island Road? I think she is. Oh, the, the new build. The tear down. I've got uh, pictures of that, too. Did you guys this get This is there? for golf on Wood Island Road? Yes. You're up. On Thursday, yeah. September 5th, 7.40 p.m., the Town Hall Central Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Mass General Laws and Section 30700, Town of Situa Code of Bylaws regarding the application of Edward Goff to raise and rebuild an existing dwelling on property located at 19 Wood Island Road, Situa, to Butters, and under other interested parties are invited to attend. Good evening. I'm sorry, we were under the impression that you were still in at 7 o'clock. We caught up a little. Good. We're on a roll. Don't ruin it. For the record, my name is Carmen Hudson. I work for Kevin Arrow Consulting. I am representing Mr. and Mrs. Goff. Mr. Goff is present with me as well as Ms. Heidi Condon from HC Design the Architects for the project. The Goffs purchased the property at 19 Wood Island Road recently. Uh, it has a total lot area of about 40,115 square feet. As you can see, this lot has a peninsular configuration. It is surrounded by salt marsh along three sides of the property. There is also a floodplain that runs along elevation 10, is of designation AE. The dwelling is just outside the floodplain, currently, the existing dwelling. Uh, the structures are in a state of disrepair. Uh, the existing dwelling is attached to a, a garage via a covered concrete walkway. There are also, there's also an attached deck in the rear and a detached deck going down the ledge. There's also a couple of sheds located on the site. Uh, the dwelling is served by an on-site septic system that is in working condition and by a gravel driveway that has a very odd configuration and is difficult to maneuver. There is also an existing paver patio located on the side of the dwelling and an attached porch. There are also walkways throughout the, the site that just connect the, the different structures. This is a wooded uh, property, so there is a lot of shade. If you have the opportunity to visit the site, uh, there's moss all over the, the paver patio and also all over the, the roofing systems. Um, I actually provided you with two plans so that you may be able to take the existing conditions plan to the site and take a look. And also because with all the labels, it was a little bit difficult to, to see on this one plan. 
What the COPs are requesting permission to do is to raise the existing dwelling and replace it with a new dwelling in a new configuration, but primarily over the footprint of the existing dwelling. They will, they will replace the attached deck in the rear with a new larger deck and a screen porch in the rear. They would like to just fix the garage and fix the roofing systems, remove the trees that are very close to the structure, and some of which are also leaning against the structure. I submitted also some pictures with the, the narrative. Um, and they would like to extend the existing gravel driveway, keeping it gravel, but just so that they can maneuver around it. Again, if you have the opportunity to visit, it is very difficult to maneuver with a car. Um, they would like to also remove the paper patio, so they would be removing impervious and putting a crushed shell patio around uh, a new fire pit, so effectively put impervious materials down. And they would like to just redo the existing walkways so that they could connect the new, the new structures. Um, also in the rear, going down this, this ledge, there's very large areas of visible ledge, and the soils are primarily shallow bedrock. And just trying to reach the, the rear, even the shed in the rear, is very difficult. So they would like to put some ste steps, perhaps cut them on the ledge to be able to go down safely. Um, we also attended the FEMA meeting yesterday before 7 o'clock so that we could actually talk to uh, a FEMA specialist. And right now, the floodplain here is at elevation 10. But if the plans get approved as they are, the floodplain next year would be on elevation 13, which would be pretty much here. So this would be the only area that would be outside of the floodplain as of next year. Outside? Outside. Everything else would is be in. within the flood. Exactly. Right now, it is not. Right now, the entire house, existing and proposed, are not in the flood lane. But next year, they would be in. And Mr. and Mrs. Goff discussed it, and they would like to raise the, the foundation and the house so that they would be compliant with next year's flood maps. Even though they are not required at this moment, it'll only be good for a couple more years. And then right, they're and they're going to raise it again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Hopefully not. So. Uh, that can is can you orientate me there? I, I was at the property yesterday. Yeah. <clears throat> and so there's a as you go down the road, there's a small shed uh, to yes. the left. This one right here. Okay. Now, what's going on with that? The shed That's, will remain. Again, what is it? Just it's not a pump house or anything, it's just a shed. shed. No, it's just a shed. Okay. They, they just would like to, and good thing that you were there, they're just not in very good condition. They just want to fix what is there. Okay. What will be raised is the house. Now, I saw a pink uh, mark. What is that? What is that denoting the, the That's pink ribbon? Salt marsh. Salt marsh, That's okay, salt which is right. Bottom. Okay. Mm -hmm. How many added square feet are you adding to the existing? perimeter of the house now. The footprint of the, of the dwelling. Actually, see, I do have a sketch. So the existing roofed area is about 1,700 square feet. The proposed would be about 2460. So 1760 miles. But you're also expanding the deck too, which is not yes. going to have a roof, right? No, so the, the deck, no, the deck does not have a roof. Right. However, we're also removing the patio, the, which is in purpose. In the back there, yeah. Exactly. So actually, within the buffer zone, the amount of impervious materials would be reduced because we're removing the, the impervious patio and we're just putting crushed shells on. But in total, in the entire site, the total amount of impervious that would be uh, increased is about 50 square feet, 60 square feet. That's after the increase in footprint of the house of roof materials, mm -hmm. but the, then the, uh, taking out the 
stone patio. Yeah. Hey, it's an incredible site, by the way. What a beautiful spot. Um, have you demonstrated how many large trees you're going to remove? You said you're going to remove trees. Yes. Yeah, actually, if you flip this over. So this, obviously, whatever trees where we think, like, for example, this tree right here would be within the porch mm -hmm. itself. So I'm not counting that. but. Uh, like those two trees right there are really high. They're kind of leaning. This one's over here. There's one, and I have a picture there too, that's really leaning on top of the roof. So I do have them labeled on the plan. There are the three trees over there, then the two trees over here. There are this also two trees that are also leaning against the garage. Those two trees we would like to remove as well. But um, I mean, obviously, the ones that are falling within the footprint of the house, they would have to go. I did not label those. How many of those are there? W within the footprint. Of within the, the footprint, not um, the cleaners. Okay. Well, we have three over here, okay. and we have two, so that would be five. Okay. Then the two next to the garage, that would be seven. No, not in the footprint, not. The ones leaning. Okay, so just in the footprint yeah, of the house, there is one. Uh, there's one back here where the where the deck is, so that would be two. Uh, there is, there are two on this side where the driveway will be, because the point is to keep the the driveway going around that middle tree. Yeah. So this to avoid this jog. We would put driveway there, so that would be those two trees and the tree that's over here because we're also widening this in order to be able to go around. Yeah. So it would be three trees with the gravel driveway. You're staying out of the 50 foot buffer though with those removals, right? Uh, the, with those remove, uh, except for this tree right here within okay. the driveway and the two that are within the garage because the garage is yes. mostly within the 50 yes. foot. All the others would be outside. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, the two that are leaning against oh, the yeah, house, yeah, yeah, yeah. one of them is living. Yeah. But as you could see, this is also an area that has a lot of ledge. Some of those trees are not in good shape themselves. Um, You mentioned the word, excuse me, you mentioned the word foundation when you said to comply with the new rules. Are you talking putting in a foundation or putting the house on the floor? No, on a, on a foundation. Because it's an AE zone, mm -hmm. it can be on a full foundation. However, it has to have openings, flood openings, yes. so that That's why I'm asking. during the 100 year storm it can go through. Yeah. But the town of Sitwet requires the top of foundation within an AE zone to be a foot above the base flood elevation, which is not required in most other towns. So this foundation would be, since the elevation would be, this, well, would be 13 mm -hmm. next year, the top of foundation would be at 14. And then that foundation would have to have flood openings in order to be flood compliant. Again, it's not something that is required right now, but, but later be. on, in, exactly, in order to try to avoid huge insurance rates and having to change anything in the future, they're willing to do that now. Paul? No questions. Kevin? No questions. Pat? Um, you talked about moving the oil tank. Yes. I'm sorry. I how is that going to be done? And I think is fight department required, I think, for. Yeah, I, it's well, an underground? Would, no, right now there is an oil tank. If you went there uh, on the side, there is, and you could see some also on the pictures. There is a deck, like on the second story, and underneath there is kind of like a room, and the oil tank is in that room, about where that dot is. So they would like to remove that and put an underground propane tank, but they obviously would have to abide by the fire department regulations. Okay. And that's what they would like to do. Mm -hmm. huh? what, what about erosion controls? Yes. Uh, this line shown right here all around the peninsula and going to the ledge and would serve as, sil as a siltation barrier during construction and also a limitation because the septic system is in the front. Mm -hmm. We also want to 
delineate the, the limit of work so that nobody drives accidentally over the septic system. So this is this is the sensation there. And it would be a silk sort. Anything else? Anybody in the audience? I think we should just have some real clarification as to which trees are coming down and make sure that they're on the plan. They, they, are, uh, they are labeled on okay. the plan. Okay. Can't think of anything. No, I mean, it's a dynamite site. Yeah, it's a tough site to work with, but, but, but you've got, thought. you're staying right within that nice little. We tried to do that as much as possible. Great. On this site. Okay. Yeah. 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 It also makes sense being higher so that you can see all the views. Yes. Okay. Motion to close. I make a motion to close. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you very all right, much. good luck. Welcome to the commission. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Farrington, 117 Turner Road. Well, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just, I mean, I like, I like some fresh air too. My body temperature's out there. I'd always rather freeze to death. I'd always rather freeze to death. Freeze to death. <laughs> On Thursday, keep us awake for a while. Mm -hmm. Thursday, September 5th, 2013. Um, 7.50 p.m. the Town Hall Central Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700, Town of Central Code of Bylaws regarding the application of Daniel Farrington to elevate an existing dwelling on property located at 117 Turner Road, situate of Butters and other interested parties are invited to attend. Thank you. My name is Paul Miravito from Ross Engineering Company, representing the owner, uh, Daniel Farrington. Uh, he owns the existing dwelling at 117 uh, Turner Road. The property line is <coughs> yellow on the plan. Um, to the northeast is an existing seawall. This is an area where the seawall was washed out in the storm about three years ago. Um, the existing house is on a uh, Port Concrete Foundation. He's, uh, he has applied to a federal grant program to elevate the house up. Um, the existing foundation, which is concrete, will be uh, cut and removed from the site, and in, in, in its place, there will be uh, concrete piers installed in accordance with the structural engineering plans that we submitted with the application. Um, the existing ground elevation is around 13 in the front to 14 by the seawall. Uh, the proposed top of pile elevation is 21.2. This is, um, that's based upon the elevation of the uh, preliminary field maps. The preliminary flood zone is elevation BV19. The reason we put the files up two feet higher is because in the state building code, we have to add two feet over and above what FEMA shows. And that's what, the, that's what they're proposing. It's a relatively small lot. The house will, will be picked up on cribbing into the place and then uh, years installed accordingly. There are some wood uh, posts that were put in the back of the yard during the process of restoring the seawall. Um, the pictures show that there's nothing there at this time and it's my understanding that um, that'll be the, um, these wood piles will be used for a proposed deck in the future. Um, this is time sensitive. Um, they have filed with the planning board as well. I've included in there an elevation certificate based upon the existing house, and we'll supply you with one when the work is completed. Um, we don't show any silt sock here. Uh, we, we can install one during construction. It is a tight lot. Um, the houses are relatively close. Um, for that, I'll in the presentation answer any questions you may have. We, we do have a file number for this as well. No, I went down there. It will be good to get it up and get rid of the foundation. That's there. Pardon? I said I went down there. It will be good to get it up and get rid of the concrete block or whatever the foundation is now. This is going up. If you approve that, they're actually going to raise that two feet higher than what you yeah. approved. That's good um, for them. And this is coming in as well. Yeah. So they're all going up. 
the uh, top of the pile will be top of the pile is at 21, which is uh, five feet above the top of the seawall. In the past, you used to get two feet of clearance, so I don't like it. Bill? Okay, okay. So is there repairs to the seawall being done too? I mean, how does that work? It's done. I mean, the work on the seawall is done. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that was yeah, they just finished this year. Oh, okay. Okay, that's it. I was there as well. Good deal. Well, no questions. Looks good. Yeah. Well, one of the things we um, but got a request from the DPW that people don't build their decks right up to the seawall anymore. You know, trying to get make these seawall repairs was like really complicated by the proximity of people's decks mm -hmm. and things. And we've told the DPW that we will work with them to make sure that that doesn't occur in the future. And I realize people want to somehow get to that seawall or get get close to it, but you're not you're not proposing a deck in this plan, so I'm, uh, no, I don't think we show them on a structural drawing. I just got this the other day. It's already a, a deck there. Yeah. Because it looks to me like there's four piers. Or there's an existing open deck, but it's yeah, there's an it's existing open back. deck in the back. It says open deck to rebuild is required, but. Well, you know what I suggest in the orders that if they're going to do the deck, that they have a clearance from the wall. I, I know down in Humrock, we've got a couple where um, the uh, decks did go to the seawall, but in the wintertime, what, the, what they would do, the way they built it, they would push them down and slide them back in. Mm -hmm. There's about a two and a half foot or three foot clearance from the seawall to the deck in the wintertime. So if water came over the wall, it would go over the I'm looking at this architectural plan, and this is showing a deck that goes right to the seawall. And there's a framing plan that does that. Are you looking at sheet S1? A1. Look at A1 for a framing A1. plan, and then look at A2 as an elevation. Yep. But it really doesn't coincide with the structural plan. No, the structural But see the four, see those four piers that are between the house and the seawall. Yeah. Well, we got a different plan then. Yeah, this S one has three piers. And this, yeah. this small one, the signed, has four. Hmm. Hmm. Not consistent. Well, what he's showing is, what he's showing here is. Well, <coughs> I mean, whether there's three or four. Three or four, but you know what I see here, Frank, is that he's got, he's showing four new piers here. But then look at the, do you guys have an um, architectural? But then look at this. So this is a framing plan, and this is showing joists that go all the way out to the seawall. See, this, this is. And then look at this. You know what? It's, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. He's showing that. This is different than what you just. This could even out. be bananas and oranges. Oops. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, we should probably do it to a wood pile. Because it's time sensitive. I'll talk to him and have the structural engineer and clarify that. I see. Well, for grants, you can't do anything with decks anyway, right? I, don't know that. Yeah. I think it's just the living structure raised up, no expansion. I mean, these piers look like they're relatively new. Did they put something in after the seawall? You mean the wooden ones? Yeah. As far as, I don't know when they put them in, but 
They are new because the seawall work was done not too long ago. Right. And they put them in. Yeah, some I'm wondering if they removed them and the town put them I in. I don't know who put them in there. I, I, I don't know if the town put them back because that, that's the section where the seawall went. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. I, I, I don't know how deep those are. I suspect that's why the structural engineer is putting regular concrete piers in there. Maybe he knows they aren't that strong. But Again, what you see here and what you saw in those architecturals, it is it's not the same thing. I just got those yesterday. Uh, can I make a suggestion that you um, approve the work on the house and the piers and I'll have to come back to you to clarify what's going I mean, on? With I certainly that. could approve the house and a deck out to this, whether there's three or four right. piers is irrelevant to me. It looks to me like those architecturals are back from when they built that house originally. Might be. Probably, That's yeah. What I'm thinking. I'll bet they are. Yeah, so they are he, you know, he didn't have time. To, I mean, there's a lot of detail. Right. Now detail. these are old architect. These are hand drawn. These would have yeah. been CAD today, and these are. Yeah. So are you going to specify a setback from the seawall? Setback from the seawall. I think we'll go by this plan, this plan. S1 plan. Whether it's three piers or four is irrelevant, but that's as far as the deck goes. Right. All right. So how many and then, and you, and you, I whoa, wouldn't, whoa, whoa. I wouldn't have a problem if you had like a removable, you know, for access. Walkway. Like say, yeah, right. say your deck comes like yeah, that, I, then you you have a, so they can have access to work, but you can still access yeah, the seawall. Okay. I agree with right. that as well. Right. All right. Got all that, Carol? <laughs> What's that? Frank, why don't you tell Carol how, how many feet back from the city wall are you talking? You get a scale on you? No. What? Greg does. We want to see how many feet back from the city wall we want us to go. Oh, the deck? Yes. Yeah. Like two and a half or three feet. Three feet, yeah. Three feet. What? The deck from that? From so what more. more than that? You want to go more? I don't know. Are those to scale? Where's that? That one is. Turn it out. What's your check of dimension? <laughs> They're supposed to be. Yeah. Right here, 19.6. <laughs> Yeah, this is quarter scale though. Quarter. Use the 40 scale and see if it's 19.6. Yeah, that's not the scale. Right group. Yeah, this might have been reduced too. Thank you. Probably PDF. What did they, what did uh, DPW say they wanted? Wasn't it like four or five feet? I thought it was five. five. See, I thought they skills. wanted more than that. Yeah, I, I see you can't see excavate. Here. Yeah, they're yeah. talking about getting machinery yeah. in there, so I thought it was so more. Well, if this is 19, let's just say this, this is like 10, right? Right. Yeah. This is almost 11 feet. Mm-hmm. So if we say that's 11, just move out that way. I'd say that's more like 10. Wouldn't you? I'd say that distance is more like oh, 10. Oh, this distance here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's see that. That's 20 units. That's 20 units here. Two inches. How big is the deck? 20 units, that's 9, 10. That's about 12 feet. Yeah. So if they kept the edge of the deck back 10 from there, if they want to modify that, they can come back to us. Okay. All right? Put that back that way. And that, yeah, it's not to you. <laughs> hey, it works. <laughs> you okay with that, Paul? That's one of those. It's one of those trick scales. It's kind of like a rule of the first three feet is if cut off. If you want to change it from what you recommend, then I'll have to come back. Yeah. Right. We're on. Uh, t we're, um, 
being recorded. Okay, do I have a, uh, anybody in the audience for Farrington? I make a motion to close. A second? second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carol, we have, um, we can issue orders on this one. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we're just going to make sure we add that piece on the deck. Is it, is it Liebman? Yes. Liebman? Um, on Thursday, September 2nd, 8 p.m., the Town Hall Citrus Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws. The bylaws regarding the application of Michael Liebman to remove a dwelling number 2A and expand dwelling number 2 on property located at 2 Lighthouse Road, situated. Butters and other interested parties are invited to attend. Thanks for the use of your scale. You're very welcome. Do you have a notification for a letter? Yes, I do. Uh, Michael Liebman, Liebman Real Estate Services. Um, representing uh, Two Lighthouse Road Down We Trust, the owners of Two Lighthouse Road. And uh, currently the property has two dwellings on it. Uh, and uh, the intent is to uh, remove the dwelling closest to the street and uh, construct an addition to the uh, uh, dwelling closest to the water, as indicated on that plan, the areas to have. The uh, existing house is, I have some other a drawing and, and, and may clarify things, but um, the existing house is actually uh, closer to the setbacks uh, than the hub paper, than a proposed house. We've been through to the zoning board. And uh, so we, the intent was to put the new addition within the existing uh, zoning uh, setbacks. And to, in fact, we've uh, decreased the amount of pervious area uh, of, by, with the new construction, down by about 165 square feet. And additionally, we're uh, reducing the amount of covered deck area in the back by another 80 square feet. I have some pictures of the site, too, which it, Helps it all be an idea of what's, what, what the intent is. Um, we intend to uh, put silt controls along the uh, edge of the deck to, though the, ma the majority of our work is going to be on the street side of the site, but we will be doing some work on decks and some windows and things that, uh, so we will put in silt control. I'll be happy to explain or answer any questions. Frank, can we approve two things at once? One going down and one being expanded? I mean, can you do that? I think so. Yeah. yeah. It's all pilot. Yeah, like a raise and rebuild. Okay. Yeah. 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 Same, same deal. Penny? No, I don't have any questions. You're staying basically in the same footprint of the second one you're taking down. Yeah, we're, 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 yeah. yeah. that's right. In fact, we're, it, They're actually moving here, the side less. setbacks in, yeah. yeah right. right. Bill? Good. Good. All good. No questions. Do we have um, structural plans or anything? Foundation plans? Um, there, there is. There. Uh, I've not presented any uh, foundation plans. The, the in intent is to um, uh, put a. Uh, there's no. Ba there's no basement being constructed. It's all going to be uh, foundation, uh, frost wall depth. What's the existing? Foundation now for the existing the, house. The existing foundation is poured concrete. And so you're going to continue that. We're going to we're going to continue with poured concrete, um, but the the uh, existing flood level is uh, t it's an uh, A10. Uh -huh. our, our existing first floor level is 12.6. The new addition is going to be at 12.6. Uh, do you, did you look into what the new flood elevation? Are you concerned about we, that? We haven't really dealt with it. We're dealing with the existing, uh, existing flood levels. 
Next year we'll be here quick. We talked early today, and, and I mentioned that Neil Duggan should be consulted about this uh, as far as the structural plan. And also, Michael, if you could explain how the garage works because of the elevation involved. The, the, the street elevation is, is lower than the, the site, essentially, most of the site is at 11, 11.1, thereabouts. It drops off towards the street. Mm -hmm. And in order to maintain the existing grades coming up to the house, we're actually dropping just the garage down to 10.1, sloping to 10.25. But that construction is just, is just the garage, and it, it, the garage doors are going to have uh, engineered flood openings in them. This is an elevation of the proposed. This is, I, can, I can show you that, what I'm talking about. This is the existing house mm -hmm. right here. The addition is here. The uh, elevations, that's the, 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 the street elevations about, sorry, about, right. about nine. So in order to get to the garage without unreasonably raising the grades and screwing around with the street, we drop just the garage down to a lower level. But the rest, the existing house is the first floor level is 12.6. We're going to maintain that same height. The uh, existing top of foundation was 11.3, and the, the uh, it's an AE 11, so we're going to be 1.6 above the. So you're going to raise those two buildings. We're going to raise one building. One building. This uh, here's the street. This building here is going to is going to go away. And this two-story building here, which is this building right here, that's, mm -hmm. that that is going to stay. Right. Then, so that building is sort of skewed, and that, and, and it, it doesn't fall within the zoning setback line. So and you're gonna. Miss. And then. Uh, <laughs> and then you're gonna pour, so excavate and pour a new foundation. Yes, just but just a just a, a frost wall. So here again, the ocean's over here, the street's over here. So the, this is the garage section right here. So the site slopes, and then it's basically flat all the rest of, of the way until it gets that. And that foundation's allowed in that zone. This this foundation is an existing foundation. No, but the proposed addition. The, the proposed is fine. Yes, I mean this, it's a there's no crawl space. It's basically a, it's a it's a a, um, a frost wall with a concrete slab. Well, I, I think that'll be the discretion of the building department. Well, Mike, well, I'm just usually when you exceed 50% of the value of the structure, you've got to get all that compliant. Um, well, we're going to be above, uh, above the uh, flood level with uh, all of our construction. Mm -hmm. okay. Again, the current, exception being the current flood level. Yeah, right. That. right, but that's all they have to meet right. is the current. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Except they may be back soon. Um, is there anybody in the audience? For this, we got to dig down into the garage. I mean, it could require a revised plan if building has some recommendation or requirements. So maybe come back to us. Do you have anything? So, is there any? You have some silt protection out front. Yes. There was uh, an overall reduction in the impervious. Right. And, uh, the, 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 by taking down the existing structure, it's, it's approximately 160 some odd square feet. And what zone are we in? 11. The whole site? Yes. There's not a V zone in, in the front part of this? No. It's on the other side. It's on the harvest side, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. There's also been some new buffers created because of zoning on either side of the house, and we talked about plantings could go on that whole western side of the property. It's 
so shaded and narrow, I wouldn't yeah. know what would take there, but I recommend that they speak to so many people. Well, if it's, if it's going to be impervious, there isn't much you can do there, quite honestly. I mean, mm. No, that's all, yeah, it's all going to be pervious. It's just, but what we did ask me. people to do, we had a couple of issues to the left or right of that where we had people removing some pervious, some impervious yeah. areas, but there's none proposed. And the driveway is... is the driveway's, I mean, some of the driveway is going to go away by virtue of the new... And what is the driveway? What is it? Is it asphalt it's or concrete? Okay. But there is room for plantings on both sides of the house. I have pictures. There's, yeah. there's quite a bit of planting along the, uh, along the side of the house. And yeah, the east side is... There's east, a walkway. Yeah. Side, there's a walkway which, which and the construction is going to affect. Yeah, I know. So, that, so that's going to be restored. That's going to be restored. I mean, this is just as I mean, there's, there's a, some good attention paid to landscaping on the side of the house. So if that's that's the beside the existing house that's remaining. So we're going to we're going to continue that same theme across, even with the additional space we have to bring it up to the street. Yeah. Okay. This is the house that's being raised. So there's, there's a, a, a concrete porch there. That's the primary primary thing that's encroaching on the eight feet. So that all that hard surface is going to go away, and that will become the same kind of uh, access way because the entrance is sort of the middle of the house. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And it, nobody else on this. Okay. I make a motion to close. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Adams, 59 Townsend, Septic. On Thursday, September 5th, 2013, 8, 10 p.m., um, Town Hall Citrus Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700. Town of Citra Code of Bylaws regarding the application of E. Decker Adams, Trustee Michael J. Tyner Trust to repair a septic system on property located at 59 Townsend Road, situate abutters and other interested parties are invited to attend. Good evening again. Uh, more Sedgwick Engineering representing the applicant. This is a septic <coughs> system repair project. It is an existing home. Um, shown here on the lot number 59, Townsend Road. The wetlands that we have on the site at the back of the site is a bordering vegetated wetland shown in blue by Brad Holmes. This was delineated um, this past summer. Off of the wetland, we have the 50-foot buffer zone in red, 100-foot buffer zone in green. The work that we're proposing is a new septic system. We're going to redesign the plumbing interior of the house so that it exits the front of the house. We have a new Hoot H600 treatment tank, which is essentially a miniature wastewater treatment tank. We have a pump chamber and then a pressure dose leaching system all in the front yard. Um, we've tried to get the system as far away from the wetlands as we possibly can here. All of the work is outside the 50-foot buffer zone, with the exception of the abandonment of the existing septic tank. The cover on the existing septic tank would be opened and we'd fill it in with sand or granular material that would be abandoned in place. Along the edge here, the down gradient edge around the house, we're proposing a um, straw bale a line or an erosion control line. Um, the plan has been submitted to the Board of Health. They have not signed off on the plan yet. Penny? No. No questions. Bill? No, sir. Richard? No. no questions. No questions. Pat? What was the difference between the first plan we submitted and this one? Was it the hoop system being? No, the only, the only difference was the first plan was on the sewer dam. This is oh, okay. an ADADA. And is it the hoop system is because of elevation of groundwater? And the yeah, so at this at this site we had a real slow perk test. It was a 73 minute perk test. And by doing the hoop system, which Instead of a regular septic tank, this is a miniature wastewater treatment tank. We're allowed to take a reduction to the groundwater or a size reduction. And in this case, we took a 50% size reduction in the size of the leaching system. 
without the treatment plant, the septic would be twice the size that it is there. Would never so fit. How does it treat it? What, Chemically? Yeah. What is, how does it treat it? Yeah, what it is is on the, on the surface of the ground is, a, uh, is an air blower that's sucking in air and pumping it into the tank, and it promotes aerobic bacteria. Anybody in the anybody in the audience? It's a tough spot to <laughs> look at. Did you ever figure out where the water was coming from? In the back where that water was coming up out of the ground? Can we think it's coming from the pipe in which will be relocated? <laughs> it's it's a not a backyard. Yeah. yeah. I mean it's I'm amazed that there's not water in the solo. Let's see. <laughs> Don't say that. Well, it wasn't, I but it was. Uh, yeah, but it might be. Gee, okay. I make a motion close. Second. All in favor? Oh, yeah, we can't. We, yeah. Well, we could close subject to subject approval. To yeah. I make a motion to close subject. Do we want to do that? Well, I don't, you know. Well, the only risk is if the Board of Health changes something or... Well, we're not doing orders till next... Two yeah, but if we close the hearing... We can't entertain and, and any they, additional... they want to yeah, change something. something. Yeah. You then if you're, if you're doing orders at the next meeting, could you... Yeah, why don't we do that? Leave this open and have them ready. Yeah, you know, we are trying to get it done expeditiously. Yeah. Essentially, you'll obtain the same thing. That if we don't close this, if we close this and then they don't approve this and you have to come back, then you have to start all over. If we don't close but have the orders ready at the next meeting, essentially you're going to hit the same timeline. Yeah. Because if we close tonight, you wouldn't have orders till the next meeting. Okay. So BOH right. gives you the thumbs up, then you're all set to go. Yeah. So then we can get, we can close and give you the orders at the same meeting. So if you do that, that's agreeable. That that works. Okay. Yeah, she hadn't reviewed it yet. It wasn't that she had any issues with it. It's just that she didn't get a chance to get to it. So yeah. Right. I'd be suspicious of anything that was called a hoot system. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the same system. <laughs> President Bush has a property. Okay. Uh, then I make a motion to continue. Um, 916. Adams. Yeah, Adams. 59 Thompson to September 16th at 6.30. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Daily 161 Turner Road Elevate. On Thursday, September 5th, 2013, at 8.20 p.m., the Town Hall Central Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 4 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700, Town of Central Code of Bylaws, regarding the application of Jeffrey Daly to elevate an existing dwelling on property located at 161 Turner Road, situate at Butters and other interested parties are invited to attend. Yes, my name is Michael Viviano, Viviano General Contracting. This is in regards to an elevation project of a, an existing home on 161 Turner. Road. <coughs> the sure. elevations are generally in the area of 14. Uh, it is behind the seawall, and the seawall elevation is. 13.54. Uh, we're proposing, this has now become a B zone, B19, and we're proposing to bring it up to the elevation 21. This is for the proposed flood map? Yeah. This is the May 12th. Okay. This year. Okay. And so what's going to happen is we need to elevate it two feet higher than the 19, so it'll be at elevation 20 to the lower structural number. Which then will increase the first floor and the utilities, which are on the first floor, right now up to elevation 23.1. Penny? No, I don't have any questions. Bill? Richard? Oh. Oh, no questions. Pat? Green card. 
PowerPoint. We just got it. We even opened it. Oh, we did. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah. We filled the North yeah. Nintendo before yeah. a long time ago. Oh, oh, so you have them? I don't think they're all here, but it was at least a couple of years. Well, probably some days, a few weeks ago. No, no, this is mine. What is this? This is going on. Oh. Okay. Can we? I guess we can. Shouldn't they have even opened? Yeah. Did Bob Crawford, did he put this together? Yes. He always comes up. Always comes up. I brought it over like three weeks ago, didn't I? The notice of intent? Yeah, but that, the notice of Come to the meeting. Oh. But somebody, you, one of you, needs to be sending out these to the abutters and getting back the certified mailing. Yeah, there's a whole list he might have them. I don't. I can't honestly tell you this. Bob usually handles all of that for me. The notes of the chest. Yeah. 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 Yeah
the opportunity for the seed to come in and to come out. Okay. But I do need to buttress it. So if you notice, you got some buttresses. I saw that. Because uh, we, we, you know, when we just heard we're coming up another three feet plus two, uh, uh, now my, I, I need buttressing in this structure. You know, I mean, we have to make it safe. I, mean, I know how you guys think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen us. <laughs> No, it's pretty impressive. I just, I had never seen anything like no, that. No, it's kind of a new thing that we pretty much trying to, you know, we're busting out the slab underneath, the water comes in, we're going to saw cut down and pretty much make piers around the perimeter. Mm. And leaving a, leaving some nice corner piers for us to um, drag the load in both directions. But um, we do need the buttress, buttress the interior once you can see. Yeah. So. Well, I think... I mean, I, I'm, I wouldn't have an issue with this. I, obviously, you got to get it by Neil, and I'm sure that yeah, you can I, certify it. But I think we just need to make sure we're, we've got this properly advertised, and, and if we can make sure we get to that, then. Well, because if we're coming back on the 16th, I mean, we've only got one more shot, right? And I just want to make sure that our structure isn't going to be a problem. I don't have to go back and change drawings, because we'll miss our window. Grand program. Right. You might want to have you run up this up the flagpole with Neil. I mean, as far no, as we're I concerned, any Neil. anything that's less disturbance and can comply is is certainly okay with our. I, I would not. Have, if this was a normal, you know, basement foundation, minimal rebar, ten inch walls, you know, I would not even consider this. But seeing that it's all in there right now, and if you know, we, we've got the existing drawings that confirm it, so. Yeah. We're just going to try to use it and, and go up. Um, seems like a good idea to me. It looks pretty impressive. Yeah, I don't think Neil. I don't think Neil have a problem. Did you sign on for this, Mike? I did. Yeah, he's going to have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, I we think did. getting that deck away. Now we did do a similar one on uh, 111, 111 Blades Road for. Um, Musto. Right. Oh, Shirley. 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 Yes, yeah. we did it for Shirley. We came up with that same type of oh. bracing system in there. And it's also behind the seawall. Right, so. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if it flies with Neil, it's okay. nice not to see as much disturbance. Um, but if you would talk with them about that, pulling that deck back and then just having some sort of ramp or something I and mean, they just we, we know that they're going to be doing a lot more work to the seawalls so and what's the point in having something built right up against can it can we come up with something say on one side where we can we can extend out like the bridge to get over to it yeah right yeah as long as they have access the key is that they can get access Pull for equipment and right and leave some because we can't attach to the can't attach to the seawall right right no anymore. See, I mean, That's some of them still are. Some of these I know. are. Um, oh, I know. So but we're taking them off. Working on that. It's a good thing. <laughs> right. yeah, we're working on that. Off. What we did is we pulled them and set them down in front. But uh, if we could have some load down there um, just to support the bridge, mm -hmm. I don't. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah. As long as you don't impede equipment. That's you know, right. if you had something, we have them down flush at grade. right. If you had something flush at grade with a post resting on it or something, yeah. so they can get equipment in there yeah. when you move it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, hopefully you can find out that you've advertised or get it advertised real yeah. fast. So. So I make a motion to continue daily 161 churn at 750 on September 16th. If we opened it. <laughs> oh. Well, let's we'll say we did that. But if you haven't, then we got to open. Okay, then we'll read. Well, but if they don't have green cards, should we maybe wait to open well, it? Because they might want to mail them. So. That way you haven't opened it yet. You just postpone. Oh, all right. I make a motion to postpone. Right. Daily 160. Glad right. Carol kept you to last. <laughs> <laughs> what did he you do? Because <laughs> he was at a meeting. Oh, all right. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks for the information. I appreciate it. So I'm not going to have to bring Peter back to this. Actually. Not for me. Not bring your green cards. Frank, I wonder for the OOCs for these elevations, if we should have a condition in there that excludes any approval of 
decks and footings. Like it, this is this was meant to be just to elevate, and that's why we're rushing them through all the deck footings and all that. We should just exclude that. Well, if they have it on the plan, and it's okay, but I think we should be telling them right up front: get the thing away from the seawall. I, yeah. you know? I mean, when Dave was here, he asked Dave Ball was here. He asked us to help him out with that right. in the DPW, you know. So, but. Yeah, the question is how much of that is within our... One of them, I think, is involved in a lawsuit right now. I think the Farrington one, the first one. I think if you, he's fighting or suing the town, the town is... Yeah. So I think if we're doing elevation grants to rush them through, to, to distance ourselves from this other issue, you know? I think that if they want to get it done, maybe they'll agree to it and... Yeah, uh, flip up decks yeah. or something. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. if they get what they want... And then we yeah. come back for something later on. I'm saying just hold the feet to the yeah. fire now. And, and you, you're wearing it correctly, I think, too, that we're approving that the actual little thing of the house. Yeah. It's not to be no expansion or anything like that. Right. If anything, exactly. is to take right. away from the wall. Right. 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 And right. Right. Because I was thinking that before this whole discussion as well, people yeah. might try to right. squeeze a few extra. Yeah. That's a great thing about having you look at yeah. yeah. That was just, I'm looking at that one. Yeah. That is fascinating what yeah. they're doing. Yeah. You think Neil will be okay with that? Because it's. That's, well, that's his call. Yeah. Shirley, I think, that but the, I think the, I think the, the Rivermore will stamp it. If yeah. the structural engineer will stamp it and say it's okay, they're pretty thorough. So uh, the front end is going to be open, so the water is no, going to be perpendicular. Yeah. Usually, if those guys are willing to say it's okay, they're not, they're not winging it. It is a lot of work there to get that. Yeah, all the rebar. Yeah. One last one. Has he got his cards, Carol? Yeah. I was just like amazed. I said, wow, I didn't think that he really did anything that bad to make be the last guy on the list. But you do me a favor. I've been in hearings in Cohasset all night, so I just got out of there. On Thursday, September 5th, 2013, 8.30 p.m., the Town Hall Citral Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40, the Massachusetts General Laws, and Section 30700, Town of Citral Code of Bylaws, regarding the application of Anthony, is it San Donato? Yeah. For Vista pruning on property located at Zero Wood Island Road, situated butters and other interested parties are invited to the town. Uh, good evening, I'm Paul Shea with Independent Environmental Consultants. And I'm representing uh, Mr. San Donato, who lives at Seven Wood Island Road. He has an existing uh, new house that actually came before the commission about three or four years ago. And he has a proposal that he'd like to do some vista pruning and clearing on the property. If I'm looking uh, just to the north of him. It's actually Zero Wood Island Road, and it's owned by the town of uh, Situate, and it's actually uh, Situate Conservation Commission's in charge of it. Basically, he, from where his property line is, his northern property line, the 50-foot buffer zone from a bordering vegetated wetland comes onto his property towards his house. He'd like to open up some views of, he's re he really won't be getting any water to it's actually views of the coastal wetlands. The area where he'd be doing the pruning, though, is actually a bordering vegetated wetland under your jurisdiction, and it's on the town property. There's an intermittent stream that drains down uh, from under um, Wood Island Road. It drains through the BBW down into the coastal wetlands. And uh, I've got some photographs <coughs> showing the areas where he'd like to do some pruning. He'd like to just basically open up some areas of views of the coastal wetlands from his back deck and from his living room. I talked with Frank about this uh, about a month ago. And I think I came to see you folks on the 19th of uh, August. Just to talk about, this is I think one of the first ones coming where it's actually town-owned property we're asking to do alterations on. But this particular property could the green line on the plan is the bordering vegetative wetland, which is on the town-owned property. The 50-foot buffer zone extends towards Mr. Uh, San Donato's house. Uh, on brown on the plan is actually, the, I believe, the back, that's the new location of the house. 
the, the gray rectangle was the original house that was on that property a few years ago. So this is his, the old house, and now the house is angled this way. There's a deck coming off the back of the house. So his prime corridor he's looking to try to get is in this area right here. He does not own the land going to the west. That's someone else's land. So he's trying to open up some views down into this wetland right here. Uh, in talking with Frank, one thing he suggested was mitigation-wise is that outside of his view corridor with some of the um, nuisance and invasive species, uh, you've got a lot of climbing vines that are actually choking some of the trees to take them down on the town property to try to free those trees up so they can grow. Uh, typically with a vista pruning project, we're trying to stay, uh, we keep at least 90% of the tree canopy. We're not touching the tree canopy at all. Uh, if you look, the photograph, you're looking off, say, the back deck looking in. The tree canopy is all up here. We're not touching it. We're actually down probably in the lower one-third of the trees where the vines are actually climbing up. So it's really just selective clearing. In this case here, you take out a couple of vines here, it's going to open up from views, but the tree canopy is way up here. Where right. So we're in the lower third of the trees coming down to the ground. Um, in some cases, it's really just cutting the vines and yeah. pulling them down is going to open up the view. Yeah, if anything, it's probably be, helping, right? Yeah, we, yeah. Well, we may not be taking down many branches at all. It's, it's really all the vines. And then from yeah, on, on the plant itself, if you look, coming up towards Wood Island Grove this way, this is the area we could look into on the town property on, on also doing the same thing. A couple things will happen here. He'd like to get some better views of the wetland. Again, he's really not going to get any water view by doing this. But if it's done correctly and we take some of the uh, vines that are growing up, even up towards Wood Island Road, as you, as it, you come down Indian Trail and you take a right onto Wood Island Road, it will be opening some up views to everybody, actually, of that coastal wetland. It'd be very little intrusive work into the DVW. We're really working right at the actual wetland edge line. Um, so how do we define how much you're going to do? How do we get some kind of sense of this is how much we're going to remove? Well, first of all, we're not taking down any. There's no removal of trees here. Right. There's no removal of Understood. shrubs here. We're really just in the lowest third uh, of the trees, concentrating on taking out the vines and then maybe some branches behind them. One thing I, I would suggest is that Ms. Sandinata is willing to have me on site working with the arborist the whole time. We do not want any errors on here. And I'd like to you know, probably have Pat come out to do some inspections before we do anything to say, this is where we'd like to step. The other thing is I've dealt with a lot of these projects where if we just take down some of the vines, we may it may open up enough that he's like, that's all Stop I want. But I'm just going to say, right it, if you just clear the vines in the first Correct. step, then then it, you see what you need, need to over. do for pruning, right? Because right. we're not clear, clearly we're not any. We don't need to be up in the canopy. Right. We don't need to be taking down the trees. It may just be just taking down the vines. He gets enough because a lot of these have deciduous leaves growing them. In the wintertime, they're going to be out of the way. Right. But again, it could move a little towards Wood Island Road, which would open up views for other people as they come around that corner. Doesn't seem to me. Doesn't seem a problem to me. It's no problem. I, mean, I, I do not no want errors on this product. So I'm going to be, uh, uh, I think he needs to talk with Bartlett Tree Services, and if there's another group that you're more comfortable with, that basically I'm going to be babysitting this project. But I've seen this before. And it's not chemical. It's all going to no, be by hand. No, all we're doing is just cutting. And, and a lot of times with the vines, if you cut them at, at uh, ground level, mm -hmm. and just leave them there for a couple of weeks, and you, you go back you and they just come right down. Where if they're alive, it's like Tarzan. You yeah, could be yeah, out there for weeks trying to pull them down. Right. Just cut them, let them go, and then pull them down, and yeah. that's it. Okay. But, but all the work is on the, the town property. There may be a few areas in the 50 foot buffer zone coming towards this house, and those would just be smaller plants. But the lines themselves are in the BBW. I think he's doing a favor. 
And so, I mean, uh, is he going to be using like a ladder and a chainsaw? Or, I mean, to try to keep the equipment out of the. I don't think so because uh, uh, you know, on talking with him, he said when I first talked to him about it, I said I really see buying being the biggest problem. So he won't be in there with a truck or anything. Like that. I don't think there's any need for that. In fact, I, I think you could do it that everything be done by hand, make that part of it, because that way I get to control the landscapers a little bit. Right, and then if the high things, they had to cut like a branch. They could do some climbing. And, yeah. yeah. But, but again, if, if you look, because when you're on, if I'm standing on on his back deck. You drop down a couple of steps to go down into the lawn area, which is showing uh, and where that wall is on the property. But then you drop way down yeah. into the wetland, so that we're really going to be just dealing with the stuff on the ground. Yeah. And may maybe they'd have some of those tree, uh, you know, extension tree yeah. clipper yeah. thing yeah. to yeah. go up maybe at the tops, maybe 15 feet, because you know there's no need to be going up into the tree canopy at all. And if you own the property, it would be. Pretty easy to say, yeah, this the pruning, and when the town owns it, we just have to decide. But it sounds like they can do it in a way that's not going to do any damage. Right. Fire <coughs> bases out L5 wood, wood roads, they would all roads. Yeah. It'd be a great view from there. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I just don't see any in real harm. I don't see real harm to the environment. If it was real bad, it would certainly re vegetate within. Um, Fairly quick period of time. So I, I don't. I don't see us. If you look at the photo, I don't think we have to go a heck of a lot further than the actual wetland edge line where the flag is, because that's where the vines are. If you look inside, it sort of opens up after that. So, uh, so I think it can be, you know, very limited, and uh, he's willing to do work up onto the town property, going to the road also. That'd be good. And we, think, again, yeah. we can't go to the left because. Someone else actually owns that piece of land down below him from uh, another house, I believe it's off to the left of his. Mm -hmm. so, uh, I guess it would be off to the south. And uh, it's their property and you can't touch that anyways. Okay. And there's a big, you'll see there's a big chunk of ledge. We're not going below the ledge, just to the right we'd be removing some of the lines. And that's pretty much it. Okay. And what I could do is, you know, report back to Pat, and it's like, hey, we've come this far, and you know, now that we've taken off, the first thing, there's just a couple of areas, and if we, you know, need to go up there by side, but I want to keep it as minimal as possible because it's the town of I make a motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's a vote. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. So you can have your color. That's I like. You can have your color highlighted. <laughs> I'm not to be the last one on either. That's uh, <laughs> kind of they're hoping we're worn down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's not his first. It's good. not false for us, Dan. Really uh, really Look at that lineup. Yeah. The yeah. 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 Actually, the best, I think, I do a lot of hearings, and one of my best ones was a, a year ago. It was right near Christmas. I mean, I mean, it was up in Norfolk, Mass, and they had a hearing. I want to say it was like December 20th. They were in such a good mood there. <laughs> and I was on last, and they, they had one hearing on it at the beginning that was bad, and it got better and better. So by the time I got on, I was on for five minutes. Bye. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for orders and conditions, town of Situate. TA 108 Front Street, Repair Town Pier. I make a motion to accept the orders as written. Second. Situate. All in favor? Aye. 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 Sheehan 15 Nailgate, Seagate Circle. Seagate, yep. Yep. I make elevate. a motion to accept those as written. There's Second. One too, wasn't there? Oh, there's actually a few. Yeah. With erosion control. Thank you, Carol. Yep. I second Sheehan. Farrington, oh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Farrington, 117 Turner Road, Elevate. I make a motion to accept them. Second. Wasn't there a Are we, put, we had to putting in about the deck on that one? Yes. Okay, the deck has to be 10 feet from the seawall. No. Yep, with a okay for a passage or a yeah, bridge. Yeah, removable yep. walkway. Yeah. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Wait, wait, wait. From the With a removable passage, bridge. removable bridge or passage to the seawall. To the seawall. What if they just jump? Can't do daylight. 
Right. And Ayers, 64 Moreland Road, upper level deck and first floor addition. And we're going to add to that the trees, trees. planting sure. of six sure trees. Uh, we said a couple. I think you said there were six. Uh, yeah, okay. there were six gone. And we, so we put know. six back. Although there's a lot of other good plantings in there. Are we well, doing they can do those orders too. tonight? <laughs> Why are we doing the orders? Because we said we would. Oh, really? Frank said they would. Oh. No, we did at the last <laughs> meeting. <laughs> Yep. Oh, all, all right. I just because I questioned yeah. why whether there were any old or outstanding That's orders right. on the right. property. Right. 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 They were not any. Yep. And that we'll was make a motion to accept them. I'm adding trees. Six. Yep. I second. Six trees. And the existing and the other plant to be picked yep. out. Yes. Right. That's part of it. Yep. Mr. Galvin. Yes. Apple and pear, peach. Age of bath. 120 foot. Oh, yeah. We'll go get some age. We, we knew where to get those. Don't uh, get that. The Galvin Elm. Yeah. Let's not go there. Oh, Lord. One thing that happened during the meeting, Mr. Ye from. Yeah, I saw him come in. He came in. He wasn't sure if, uh, if anything had been received from Grady and from Petroselli. Have we heard anything from them? Grady called and said that he would have something in last week and we haven't received it. But he's the engineer. I think he didn't have it in. Yeah. Because they can fillable hours, you know. But uh, I'll, I'll follow up with him. He was again. supposed to do it too pieces, right. he said. Yeah. One week he'd have this in. Surprise, there's not month. 30 people here for that. Yeah. Well, they'll, they'll come once he has something in, but he yeah, hasn't done anything. Yeah. That's another one that's stolen. Right, that'll We're be. Playing yeah. the but game. we should, we should, I think maybe going to Mr. Petroselli rather than, do we have a contact for Mr. Petroselli? I've never spoken with him. You he, he was in here at a meeting, Daily. the first one. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I think he we. He lives local. Either that or we could just issue a cease and desist on that project. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we told him. Get something yeah. into us. So I think, I think if we don't see him by the 16th, then, then okay. we should. Yeah. All right. Quick updates on these other ones here. Real uh, quick, please. 87 Maple, um, Toomey wants to go out and take a look at it. Um, oh. Greg Morse and them have offered to remove all the asphalt <laughs> that's out there. And, uh, but I said, don't do anything yet because we may want more than just asphalt. Right. So one on one, Ian Bynum, we set the yeah. ticket. So that'd be a $50 ticket. Haven't heard anything back from them yet. I talked to the police chief. He says if it goes 21 days and we haven't heard anything, then they get fucked. Oh. Same thing for Gardner. Okay. He received it. Indy Trail is a um, lot 57 Crescent. This is the one where house is being constructed right now. There was a lot of controversy. People didn't want their view taken away. Once we get through all that, then they started building it. They found all these pipes on the ground and old septics and drainage going everywhere that the original property owner had put in. The original engineer didn't know about it. Was um, Proctor? I uh, know the the woman uh, Bob Thistle mm -hmm. herself. She didn't know about these things, so she filled me in on the details of it. But the abutters are saying, there's all this water coming my way, what are you gonna do about it? And so, anyways, that's where that is. And then uh, 242 Central, that is Augie's property across from Lisa's. And we wrote by say he still hasn't done anything, hasn't answered the letter, so now he has to get the violation letter. The first letter was like, oh, you know, you have to get this stuff out of here, right? Yeah. So now he gets the violation. It's run rampant right in Humrock lately. Yeah. So the Paul and I cruise up and down there today, and there's all sorts of stuff going on. But we went to 140 River. No way. And 140 River is. Um, it's. I mean, the wall's still there. And Brandon Moss contacted me today, and it. We might have to re redo the condition. It pull out the chapter 91 requirements, make it a recommendation, and then go back to what we wanted to do about the wall. But somebody brought up, there was something mentioned about it doing more damage. But was that the I beams coming up? There was something. No, no, they, that was, they had a whole list of excuses why they right. couldn't you, take it out. That well, was that one was of their really excuses. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. no reason they can shovel that stone out of there, no. they can jack those I beams out and easily restore that thing. Right, yeah. yes. That was just all part of the smoke screen. Uh, so should I ask Toomey, uh, Brandon Moss, then, is, 
if we should just amend the orders and conditions? We deny it. The whole thing. Well, if we amend them, it's going to be to remove it. It's a right. denial. It takes away that whole argument that they have, though, about the chapter 91. Right, but it'll right. be removed the seawall. It won't be just the chapter 91. Right. All the right. conditions will change. Well, what right. happens? There won't be any because we're going to deny the project. We'll go back to our original vote we were right. to take of denying the project. Okay, I'll... I'll, I'll Try to find out legally how that's done so that right because they're going to argue they want to keep all these other conditions right and get rid of the 91 right which they volunteered okay I don't yeah, think Brandon to... understands has, has he read the orders because the orders do say right right and without it, it then it's not I think you should go show it to him Penny well I'd like to you get an overtime for this. Yeah, basically, without a license, it's an illegal seawall. So we, if we remove the, I hope so. the chapter 91, we also will order them to remove the seawall. Right. Yeah. And if it takes an amendment by us to change that thing, we'll have to advertise it to pay for ourselves. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. I'm going on. I make a motion to close. Sorry. All in oh, favor? Uh, wait a minute. I make a motion to accept July 8th minutes as written. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I make a motion to adjourn. Adjourn. go home. Second. That wasn't bad, but a funny hearing. I have a second. Second. Aye. Can I ask you a question?